welcome back all of you nona here and then uh, we are into the next day's uh, program on uh, fusion inventory and shipping implementation uh, till now uh, what happens uh, we were now into uh, min max planning with the source type of sub inventory so in a sub inventory what happens uh, it created a moment request and then it was stuff <coughs> and then we understood it then afterwards what happens uh, we made the source type of supplier <coughs> and then in which case what happens uh, it has been pushed into the purchasing module through the supply chain orchestration and then uh, we have found that and then what happens it was uh, somewhat tough even very tough even uh, so we have completed it and then now what happens we are going to make the source type as inventory so it is not like uh, sub inventory sourcing or supplier sourcing it is uh, even uh, very very tough actually because what happens shipping is involved in this now so since shipping is involved what happens we have to uh, it is a really a very tough process so what in fact what happens it has been uh, made in line with uh, what we have in uh, <clears throat> ebiz basically and so uh, what happens we will now be learning uh, the shipping part uh, in ebiz and then afterwards what happens we will now jump into a future and then see about how the <coughs> transfer orders are being executed if the source type is going to be inventory now so we are now completed the sub inventory sourcing the supply sourcing now what happens we are going to go for the inventory sourcing in which what happens the transfer orders will be created and then uh, that will be seen over here now <coughs> So what tough and then what happens if you need any questions are asking what happens you just ask questions immediately and then then, uh, then and there you get it clarified now and go there so let me begin the activity for the day <clears throat> so if it is going to be uh, what happens uh, the uh, what happens inventory or group fine we have the transfer orders which are there now actually Fine. That is on a file which I made uh, based upon the what happens the, the feedbacks uh, given by or one of my student was uh, has got stuck on the transfer orders actually and then uh, what happens I uh, rectified the problem uh, but I don't know where exactly he made the problem there are some multiple mistakes he has made now fine afterwards what happens I made this document and then this will now tell you about the transfer order prerequisites on your this thing. So here, what happens? Uh, item must be designed to move the source and destination off, and then it must be costed actually. Fine. Uh, all sub inventories must be having a location specific, and then we had some issues on this now. And if location is not specific, what happens? Not exactly working, and then afterwards the carriers and transit times must be specified, and then interop parameters must be set. And then what happens? Uh, this distance is required only for IRT route, fine. internal requisition uh, transfer order route, uh, but uh, it's preferable to give a distance also. Fine. Uh, there are some where what happens is not done. Fine. And then uh, receiving parameters must be set for the destination organization. Data access must be given for all these things. Now. And then what happens? There are five. Uh, what happens? Uh, things which has to be done. One is the release sequence rule. One is the pick slip grouping rule. One is the ship confirmation rule. And then one is the release rule. And then one is the shipping parameter. Now. Right? These five has to be set now. So we will be setting up these things in uh, EBIS, and then I will be demonstrating it. And then afterwards, what happens? We'll come back to Fusion and then do these things. Some of the setups may be superfluous, but I'm not very sure about it. But whatever what happens, you just ensure it. That what happens, all these things are such before you perform the transfer orders as such. So transfer orders is a very important one. So the transfer order is a route by which what happens, we are now going to do the movement of material between two orgs through transfer orders, if it is going to be automatic actually. So till release 12, what happens, the automatic route is only via MinMax now. MinMax is only going to generate a transfer order as well as the planning central also will be generating the transfer order. So when the planning central makes the source as inventory or what happens, that will be generating the transfer order. But uh, from uh, what happens uh, from at least 13 onwards, what happens? Uh, they have introduced the IR route also, fine, internal requisition route also. So the IRTO route also also all available there as such in release 13 actually. <clears throat> so whenever I happen, I get an opportunity to work on it. What happens? I will now make one more record on IRTO separately, and then I will send it to you. So as of now, what happens? We are going to see that <coughs> what happens with this one. So now what happens? Now shipping is involved. So what happens? These five activities has to be set now. Fine, we'll now go on how about the shipping in EVS. So if you go there, <clears throat> go to the EBS documentation and then I go to the OM now. In the OM, we go to the OM D4 now. <clears throat> OM D4. So here, if you go down and then see this now, and you'll have one document called shipping execution. Whenever you want it. So there are six ways of fulfillment of uh, the customer's needs now fine they are all uh, taken care of by the distributed order orchestration fine over four of them will be uh, basically going to operating shipping upon order entries final status actually fine and then uh, two of them one is a drop ship will go to ship as well as what happens uh, the point of sale will go to fulfill fine this will all be fully explained on my EBS training actually and then there are five entities are there the details delivery uh, stop trip and then containers actually as far as ebiz order management is concerned there are five golden rules of them 
So we'll not begin with this law. Right? We'll not begin with this. So we go there and then see this law. So here, what happens if you go and then have a look at it, go to the shipping and then go to the transaction form. So in the shipping transaction form, if you go on and make query, what happens? I have now logged in as operations user. And so here, what happens if you click on find, you will now find what happens. Uh, you will now find all the things, all the four entities are coming up now as such. <coughs> You'll be finding all the four entities coming up now. That is details, delivery, trips, stops, and containers section. Everything will be coming. <coughs> So you can see the lines region, whatever the thing where it is, you will have plenty of actions over here. And then afterwards you go to the delivery. If you, you know you choose one of the things fine here, whatever we have got delivery, right? You got delivery associated, fine, you put the delivery. The deliveries will also be having plenty of actions over here. <clears throat> so these actions are user specific. These actions are user specific. And so what happens? We will now go on and create a user now. Fine. First of all, it does not create a user. So for a new user, what happens? We have to give grants and rules. If you don't give a grant and rule, what happens? It will not be possible at all. Fine, go there. So let us now go and then create a new user. Now fine, go there. Switch responsibility to this admin now. Go there. And then let us not create a new user. Fine, go to security. Go to the user and then go to define now. So let me get a new user now. Fine, P50 underscore ship underscore user. <coughs> So P50 user and go there. I will give the password as ABC1238. <coughs> ABC1238. Here, what happens? A user employee association is not required because what happens only for purchasing is required, for order management is not required. And go there. Let me add the responsibility of order management. Fine. Order percentage. Man percentage. Uh, super percentage. Fine. USA percentage. And then you would add once again. Order percentage. Super percentage. This percentage, you see, percentage is on your tab. I will not choose the order management. So, the vision operations, you see. Super is the vision operations, you see. Click on OK and then give it down. And then what happens? I want to add sister also. So, let me add sister also here. Sister is added. I call this command. So, I'm not going to new user now. Fine, let me go then log into the user now. <coughs> Fine, go there, close it, and then what happens is not created. Fine, go there, exit out of portal applications, and then let us now log in through this. So, log out and then log in with the new user now. So, it's p50 underscore ship underscore user. The password is abc123. Entering fine on the first time, what happens? The password expires. Whereas in Fusion, the password doesn't expire. We can have the control of password expiry for six months or one year also. Uh, you go there, it's abc. Sorry, it's abc123. Give a tap. This is the welcome, and then give a tap. Welcome. Click on submit now. So, by which what happens? We have submitted it now. You don't go on in and then let me add to the favorites now. <clears throat> Click on the favorites. And let me edit the favorite now. <clears throat> this is almost looking like a springboard of uh, EBS basically. Go there. I will now say change R. Click on go now. Change. It is not coming. So let me go go back. And then now the one you do not know what is not coming at all. <coughs> oh, it's organization but it's not coming at all. I'm not sure. <coughs> Say, oh. 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 Oh.
just uh, uh, gospel edition groups. There is one the notification will be there now. Notifications to be all coming on. <clears throat> we have a notification that we add to the favorites now. Select and then click on add the favorites now. <clears throat> oh, notifications will not take you, okay, will not be what happens, uh, it will not take you to the what's called uh, navigator actually. So now see a navigator may not write my pen at all. Say SQL branch. Request will be definitely doing it. I'm going to click on add to favorites now. So I'm going to add it to the favorites now. <clears throat> now click on apply. So I will now go to the request now. Fine, the concurrent program. So it will not take it to the navigator now. So from the navigator, what happens will now go there. And, see and since uh, for our order management, what happens? Uh, we have already added the order management super user vision operations. You say so we'll now go to the order management as well. So previously what happens, all the five entities are having so many actions now, fine, here what happens, you will not be having any actions at all. <clears throat> and then here, we will also check the responsibility to order management now. Now here, you go to the shipping and then go to the transactions and bring to the top 10 list and then go for number one now. And then when you make a query, click on find, what happens, you will now find that what happens, you will have no actions to perform at all. And any other ones, when if you go there, the, here what happens? There are no actions here. Fine. Delivery, when you go there, you go to the area, go to the delivery, and then delivery also what happens? You won't be having any actions. Fine, you go there. So stop by click on the everything is not there. So what happens here? Uh, grants and roles are user specific. So we have to create a role and then grant it to the user actually. Fine, you go there. We'll now go to the shipping and then go to the setups now. <clears throat> and here go down. Shipping setup. And then you go to the grants and roles definitions. And then here what happens? We'll now create a role, now. define a role. Fine, let me get a role, define a role now. Fine, go there. I will now say P50. <coughs> fine, ship role. We had uh, so many problems with my people fine, making, making small, small mistakes because what happens is a very tough topic. And then they made plenty of mistakes. And then I corrected everything and go to the shops. And then click on it inside. What happens? All the things will be default be coming of those actions. Now, fine, go there. Select everything. Fine, go there. Click on the new one. Nothing is going there. Message. No matter, so I'll save it. So I now create a role, which what happens? Each and every entity is now having uh, very many functions to perform now. If I go there, it's not done. And then after having done this, what happens? You go there and then assign it your role. If I go there, you go to the grants. And now go. We are define the role, and then we are going to grant it to the user. Fine, double click on it. And then we have a P50 user. Fine, give it up. And then the P50 ship user. <coughs> go there. And then the role is what? It's a P50. And then you type ship role. And then if you specify an org, it will be org specific. Otherwise, what happens? It will be OE specific. So we are not defined the org. Fine, go there. So every ship user must be defined a set of roles to play. And then grant the role. Fine, go there. And then grant some roles are user specific actually. Now shipping is you execution is op operating unit specific. Uh, and then it can be made inventory org specific. Also here, what happens? Whenever you put an org, what happens? It will be org specific. Otherwise, what happens is OE specific one. So the users are basically OE specific one. Fine, go there. Shipping parameters are inventory org specific. Fine. We are do that now. And then afterwards, what happens? Order management is operating unit specific. So these are the five golden rules as far as order management is concerned. Now, fine. So this is what else. So we know we will now create an org and then we'll not do it. Fine. Go there. Let us now go and then get an org. Fine. Go to the inventory, go to the setups, and then go to org org. So let us now create an org. Fine. And then remember, uh, in few in order management, it is preferable to what happens? Uh, go via what happens? A uh, new location. Fine. Go there. Set up organization location fine. Uh, location organization tie is almost mandatory for IR ISO actually. So we had to have a separate location for this. Fine, go there. P50 underscore what happens? Uh, ship underscore lock one. And then go to the location now. So in uh, in fusion, what happens? Uh, location uh, organization tie is a mandatory almost for every. There are many many business processes which needs that now. So here at least what happens? IR ISO needs a location organization tie. <coughs> And then here, what happens? We go there, close it now, and then we leave it as such now, and then we'll come back again, and then we'll not tie it to the organization after organizations are now created. Now. So now we are now creating a location, and then let us now create an inventory org. So 
So go there, no complete fine, go there, go to the window and then go to the navigator now. Fine, go to the tools and then go to the close the form, it's not there, fine, go there, let us now go then get the organization. And the on the organization. So let us now create a new organization now, fine. P50 underscore ship underscore R. So location is P50 and then give it a tap and then commit and then classify this as an inventory R now. <coughs> Click on it and then ANV is the R and go there. And then enable the organization and classify commit. And then uh, click on others now. <clears throat> and then we'll now give all these things. Good others. And then go to the accounting information. We're now going to work on the visions uh, line of business actually. And so what happens? I'll now give the vision everywhere now. Fine. V percentage OPE. Give a tap. It's a V percentage OPE. Give a tap. It's a V percentage OPE. Give a tap. Fine. The vision, vision, vision. Fine. Enter it. Enter it. And then afterwards, they go to the others now. <clears throat> and then go to the inventory information now. Sorry. I'll go to the receiving information. <clears throat> inventory information. Okay. So I will now say P51. The one. Sorry. P50. Uh, okay. I'll now put a P50. Fine. Go there. I will now make it as vision operations. Fine. V percentage OPE. Give it up. And then look at the control determinant the sub control the best level. Fine. Go there and then give it down. And then go there. And then here, what happens in the ATP rule? What happens? We'll know how the picking rule is what absolute people. <laughs> absolute. P L four find the one which you have to give it now. Fine. Go there. In uh, fusion also, what happens? We give the absolute T4 as a one. If there is no other uh, picking rule, what happens? Uh, this will be used for picking it. And then control commit, which whatever the organization parameters are also trying to go there, close it and then we will now give us now to the form. So P T oh sorry. <clears throat> I will not give us the calendar now point. I'll not say vision is calendar now. Vision is zero one point go there. Control is commit. And remember, uh, oh god, I have not updated the template as well. I go to the tools and then I go to the copy from copy organization. Let me copy the organization from vision operations now. So once we copy it, all the accounting information will be coming over here now. All the information are coming out. I'll now go to the main one now. So this is a P50, and then the inventory order is what? V percentage OP, give it up. Visions calendars come fine. Look at the control terminals of the inventory level. It's not that. And the control commit. So by which uh, we are now complete the organization parameters of this now. P50 is an organization number. And then let's now go to the receiving information. Go to the receiving information. So we will now provide the receiving information for R now. Fine. We are going to see the receiving parameters of Fusion also. Fine, go there. I'm now setting up some value over here now. And go there. <coughs> Zero one. Copy some values over here. We will be having a look at the receiving parameters in this training actually. Is again a big one. <coughs> go there. And click on save. It's not done. Fine, go there. Close it. No, fine. Everything is not done. Fine, go there. And then you go there, and then what happens? We tie this location. This location. So having done this, what happens? You go there. P50 is a one point. Go there and then go to the other organizations. Fine. Inventory organization for P50. Then you tap. So this uh, location organization tag is required only for IR, ISO, and EBS. What happens? It is almost required for many many business processes. So it's preferable to what happens? The tie the location to our infusion actually for each and everything. And it is a irritating one. Uh, one of the customer was shouting on this no point, but what happens? It's a big. If it has been implemented, and so what happens here to follow it up. <clears throat> so, my uh, location is not tied to the organization now. I go there. Now, what happens if you go there and then we will now, uh, uh, now open up one of the customers? And then what happens? I will now make this org as a default org and go there. Let me query my customer now. Find 1143 is a customer. I'm going to query now. I can go now. So, let me query the customer. <clears throat> Go now, and then here what happens? I'll now edit it now. Fine, click on details. The learn for the customer. I will now make a change of the defaulting parameters over here now. So that what happens? This org will be defaulted for 1143 customer actually. Fine, go there. I will now see this now. Fine, go there. For 3405, let me go and then click on the details now. I'm going to edit it now. And then here I go to the business processes, and then there I will now shift it to shift to now. Fine, build to is only for AR actually. Fine. If it is water management, and then click on the details, and then let me make a change on this. So, in this place, what happens? I'll now make a change of the barrels now. Fine, go there. P50. <coughs> I'll now make a change of the barrels. So, there's a ship bar. So, this will be defaulting on this. I click on apply. So, by which it gets saved. Now, save. And go there. Close it now. Now, what happens? Let us now create a sales order. Let us now create an item also, and then assign it to the arm. So, we go there, and then go to the inventory, go to items, and then go to master items now. 
let me get an item new item on the grid so on the p50 r right on the p50 r let me go there and get an item <coughs> So this is an item in which what happens? Sir? We are now going to perform this test on this now. So let us also have sufficient quantities of this item in this inventory. R go there. It's a P fifty underscore. What happens? Ship underscore item. It's a ship test item. So purchased item template is not applied. <clears throat> no need to have a list price because we are not going to buy it. We are only going to sell it actually. <clears throat> so P50 ship item is now getting created. Fine, go then commit. So item gets created. And then we are going to assign it to the org. So let us go and then assign it to the org. And then let us have sufficient quantities in the inventory. So that what happens, we will not be having any problem while shipping it actually. <clears throat> so users, fine. Uh, grants and roles are user specific. And so what happens, we are given it now. Now, having given this, what happens? We can even go on and have a look at it now. Fine. Okay, it can be locked. So, no need to go out now. So, item has to be saved actually. So, go there, go to the tools, and then go to the organization assignment, and then let me assign it to the org now. P50 is the org. Go there, commit. Let's commit to now. Assign. So, let us now have sufficient quantities in the inventory also. And go there, go to the inventory. Go to the transactions and then go to the what's called uh, miscellaneous transaction. Click on it now. Fine. Go there. It's, the periods are not open, so it's not possible. Fine. We'll open the period. We don't have any periods in uh, what happens in e, in uh, this thing now. Fine. In Fusion, go there. Periods. Let me open up the period now. Fine. Click on change status and then click on OK now, by which the future will now become open now. <laughs> Close it now. Now we can very well perform the transaction. I go to the transactions, inventory transactions, and then I go to the miscellaneous transaction. Now, if you click on it, M percentage RE miscellaneous reserve element and all the transaction lines, you go there, and then P50. <clears throat> The, we don't have any sub inventory, so we had to have a sub inventory and go, go to the window. And then we must have on FGS and one stage. Remember, my name on the FGS and one stage is required. So go to the inventory and then ESOS is the navigation. Let us now create two sub inventories for this. Now, it's FGS and then stage. Here, in Fusion, also, what happens if we need the stage sub inventory? Fine. The stage can be physical or logical, actually. The stage can be physical or logical. Fine. Some companies will be having a stage as a logical one. So it depends upon how they are operating. But we need a stage supplementary infusion also. Right? Infusion also, we need the stage supplementary. Go there. Come on. So go there. And then FGS, what happens? Let me keep some thousand bonds over here. So we have sufficient quantities to ship now. Remember, if item is not available on the FGS the system, it will be getting back ordered. And I don't know how it has been configured in Fusion actually, because the order management I better learn now. So we need to have, uh, the, and because what happens? Uh, the movement request or move orders are going to, what happens? Uh, uh, do the allocation. And so what happens, item, you must have sufficient quantities in the inventory as such. So if that is not that, what happens, it will not be possible for you to, what happens, I make a ship on this now. <clears throat> will not unpind with the close it. Close it now. Now let us go on the grid as, you know, what happens, your sales order. You go to the orders and returns and sales orders, let me get a sales order for this one. Double click on it. So let me get a sales order. So it's 11.43 and then give it a tab. If you go to the others region, what happens? Your P50 organization is coming. Fine. Go to the lines region, and then here, I'll now go and then do it. So in the lines region, what happens? I will now say P50 percentage ship item is the one. So P50 ship item. Okay, on okay. And then I will now go for say 10 quantity, one quantity. Give a tap. So the moment I give a tap, what happens? The unit selling price will be coming automatically. Why it's not coming? Unit selling price has to come now. It's the mission's architecture only. We have an all items price available there. If you go to the lines region, 
next uh, the thing is there as a chum of fine rule and I use like that. <clears throat> and then give a commit now. Now see no changes to save as such. It's not coming. The unit selling price has to come now. The extended price also has to come now. I'll go there. Let me see what the folder is not proper. It seems Mission rules, custom items, item description. Open the folder. There must be a default folder available there actually. Why this is not coming? Was extended price also has to come now? Fine, it's not coming here now. Unit selling price, okay, is not coming here now. Fine, okay. <clears throat> Unit selling price is coming. Extended price is coming. In fact, what about the default folder will now take you to this now? Fine, because we have a what's called a uh, uh, all items price of fifteen dollars is coming. Fine, go there now. When I book it, what happens? It will not throw a lot of errors. Fine, click on book now because shipping parameters are not set. Fine, click on book order. What happens? It will be throwing plenty of errors actually. So in Fusion also, what happens? The shipping parameters has to be set now. Fine. So if the shipping parameters are not set, what happens? It will never perform any activity at all. But I don't know the integration with the order management. But even for transfer orders, what happens? We have to have the shipping parameters defined now. So now what happens? We'll be having plenty of errors. Oh, you know, fine. Go there. So there are five setups which are required actually here now in this place. What happens? The release sequence rule, the pick slip grouping rule, the ship confirmation rule, the release rule, as well as the shipping parameters. Fine. These are the five ones. And then if any of them is not set properly, what happens? Even the transfer orders will not work. So it's not fine. Go there. So we'll now go and then have a look at it now. As you can see, there are plenty of errors which are coming. Fine. Let us now set up the shipping parameters first. So here, what happens if the shipping parameters are not set properly? Even the order entry will now give a problem. So let us now go on and set up the order, the shipping parameters. Go to the shipping, and then go to the setups, and then go to the shipping parameters. So in Fusion, I will be setting it up last actually. Fine. I will not be setting it up first because I am not working on order management actually. Fine. Only working on transfer order. So only shipping is required. So I'll be setting the shipping parameters as the last parameter. So it's not here. What happens? It is required from order management perspective itself. And go there. Weight class is weight. And then give it a is a kilogram. Kilogram. And then volume is volume now. Volume is volume, and then it is a cubic meter now. Cubic meter. <clears throat> okay. What else? And then afterwards, what happens? You go there. Go to the pick release, and then here, what happens? I will now put something over here. Now, fine. Go there. Now, control L. Now, go there. Control L. <clears throat> go there. Give it. And then what happens? Now, so this is a staging sub inventory. And go there. And then in this place, what happens? Now, is the ship confirmation tool is what? Auto pick. Auto confirm. Auto ship. The one which I'm giving it now. Yes. So by which the shipping parameters are now fully set now. We will be setting the shipping parameters almost similar to what we have in Abus now. And Fusion also will be setting the shipping parameters also now. So we'll be having all this weight class. And this is mainly required only for what happens Oracle transportation management. And then the fourth tab region is required for release management actually. And then uh, these two, the pick release as well as ship transactions are for order management actually. So we also have a similar one in Fusion now. And we'll be setting it up last on this point. We'll now set up all the things last. And we'll close it now. No, no. Now, if you go and then create a sales order, it will not give any error. Sales order, we'll bring it over here. If you create a sales order, it will not throw any error. Level for the reason you have. And then you go to the others region, go to the lines region. <coughs> and then the order datum is what? P50. <coughs> Ish percentage. And then give it a tab now. And go for it. Let's say uh, two quantities and then give it a tab. And then if you give a commit, what happens? It will be getting committed. And then when you book it, it will not throw any error. Because the shipping parameters has what has been booked. I know it has been. So is what is. <clears throat> now we come to the tough portion of this. Find the real tough portion we are going to come in now. Find that. So let us now begin this. So I will have one what happens? Shipping rules is there now. I'm not going to begin now. One second. So some answers have been removed on this now. Fine, go there. So the real uh, top portion is now going to begin. Now here, what happens if you go and then see this now? So uh, in this place, we are now booked the order now. Fine, go there. Click on this book order. Six nine four two one is the one. We are going to uh, we are booked it. So if you go and then query it on the on the area now. Fine, go there. Go to the window and then go to the navigator now. Go there. Here you go to the shipping and then go to the transaction form and then query for the order line now. 
the from order number. I'm going to paste it over here and then give a tab and then make the line status as null now. And then click on find now. So this is now ready to release it. It is now ready to release it. So uh, what I will do is I will now, uh, what happens in the shipping parameters, what I have done is I have not enabled the auto allocate. Auto allocate as well as auto create deliveries are not enabled. And so what happens, it will be creating a move order in inventory. Whereas the infusion, what happens, it will be creating a movement request in uh, in uh, infusion actually. Now, what happens now? This is called a dating. So we will now come into the shipping area now. If I I'll now go on and start explaining this. The shipping area has got three zones actually. One is the filtering zone. Fine. One is the prioritization zone. One is the grouping zone. And then finally, what happens, we'll be having what the inventory picking rules, which are becoming the picture. There are the four zones. So in the filtering zone, what you're going to do is there will be multiple, what happens, details will be coming and then hitting the filtering zone. Fine, it'll be all the time. So let me explain it. So let us say there are hundred details which are now ready for shipping actually. So the shipping man will now see whether the packing material is available or not. Equipment is available or not for, pack, for pack, packing it. The manpower is available for packing or not. And then the resource, like what happens, uh, the powers, compressed air, water, etc. Everything is available or not. So based upon which you will not decide what to pick, now. Fine. what to pick, what to do the thing, what to do the uh, what happens activity on the staging area. Actually. So he will have some uh, criteria like sales order number or the scheduled ship date or requested date by which what happens is going to be ready. So once he's released, let's say I have uh, what happens uh, from first of May to thirty first of May. What happens? I have details which are having a scheduled ship date which has to be picked. But there is a shortage now. That much is now pending actually with me. So because of shortage, what happens? I have not decided that whichever is sales order is now having a scheduled ship date from 1st of May up to, let us say, 15th of May. I'm only going to pick. So out of all the 100 incoming details, what happens? Everything will not pass through the filtering zone. Only certain things will pass through. And this example, what happens? I assume that what happens? The filtering zone has now passed only detail 1 to detail 10. The remaining are not filtered. It is now filtered out. Then what happens? Only this many is only coming. But it only is coming. So this many is only coming. Then what happens? It comes to the prioritization zone. So out of 10, what happens? We have to prioritize upon which detail has to be given material first. So there are many, many criteria. One is the first come, first served. Whichever sales order is coming first, it will be allocated first. Right. There is a pulse order or the outstanding invoice amount. It will now pick up the AR's outstanding invoice. Let us say detail one belongs to customer one, detail 10 belongs to customer 10, like that. And then every customer has got a priority or the outstanding invoice. Let us say this guy owes me only $100, this guy owes me only $200, and this guy owes me $1,000. So once when I say outstanding invoice amount, whomsoever is having a lesser outstanding will now get the higher, highest priority. Right. So that will be given a top priority. So, or otherwise shipping parameter and there are some four such criteria are available here by which what happens we will not do the prioritizing of the incoming details actually. So let us say I have prioritized and then what happens the detail 6 has now gone to the first, then detail 2, then detail 9, detail 7 etc etc. So prioritization is nothing but sorting of the incoming. So if 10 are coming, 10 will go out, nothing will be dropped. Whereas in a filtering zone, if 100 is coming, all the 100 may go out or some of them will be filtered out based upon what happens with these conditions. And if something is not available, he will not be able to do all the picking as such. So filtering zone will now filter a certain amount of details, whereas prioritization zone will now what happens is sort it up and down basically. Then comes the grouping zone. In the grouping zone, what happens, I am now going to, let us say six and seven are meant for Bombay now. Fine, they will be kept together. And then uh, let us say seven and two are uh, basically for what happened, two and nine are basically for, uh, let us say, uh, this is for what happens at Delhi now. Right? They will be grouped together and then kept together. So the grouping zone is basically for what? Uh, keeping the items together where it has to go. So that what happens, the inventory boys will not make any mistakes. At all. So there will not be any wrong shipping actually. So this is for easy and error-free staging actually. Right? This is for easy and error-free staging. Right? The grouping zone is for easy and error-free staging. So the prioritization zone is done by a rule called RSR. Right? Release sequence rule. Whereas the grouping zone is done by the PSGR. We also have the same rules in Fusion actually. <clears throat> now I'm going to ask you a question. Fine. If anybody ever can answer. Now what happens, let us say, all the details are asking for item number one, which is 100 quantities each actually. Let us say I have in inventory only 300 quantities of them. So only 
three details are going to get the material, the remaining will be getting back ordered. I will again repeat, I got only 300 quantities of item one, and then every detail is asking for 100 quantities of the item one. Every, every detail is asking for 100 quantities. So the prioritization zone is now prioritized as what? Six, two, nine, and seven. The grouping zone has grouped as what? Six and seven in one corner, and then seven, two, and nine in one corner. So that what happens? The inventory boy does not make any mistake. Right. And then the, the prioritization is based upon the outstanding invoice. Not exactly. And the outstanding invoice that is now prioritized as six, two, nine, seven. Now I got only 300 quantities of item one. So only three details will now get the material. Now, the six, two, nine will get the material, and then afterwards everything will be getting back ordered. Or, Six and seven will not get the material. Afterwards, you give allocation of two, and then afterwards, nine will not get the material. So my question is what? Six, two, nine will get the material, or six, seven, two will not get the material? Tell me. Which will not get the material, and then which will not will be getting back order? Six, two, nine, or six, seven, two is my question. <clears throat> Anybody? Six, seven, two, Nana. Six, seven, two. Who is this? Thomas. Thomas is saying 672 because what happens if you group 6 and 7 together, what happens? The inventory boy will not make any mistake and then afterwards you allocate 2 and then 9 will not get material. Anybody else? Anybody else has got any other answer from Thomas has stored 672. So anybody has got an answer of 629 also? <clears throat> or you are all agreeing with Thomas of 672? Anita, what do you say about this? Six, six, six two nine will get the material, or six seven two will get the material. Six seven. Huh? Six seven two. Six seven two. You are also saying. Fine. Now I will now come to one scenario. Let us say <clears throat> the seventh guy owes me one crore. Fine. Six owes me only thousand hundred dollars. These two hundred dollars, three three hundred dollars, and then his guy has owes me one crore. Now. Will he get the higher priority? Here, six seven means what? Seven is getting the material. He owes me one crore dollar or one crore rupees. He will not give the material at all because prioritization zone is going to prioritize who is going to get the material. The grouping zone is going to be going to group the zone so that what happens? The inventory boy does not make a mistake. Just because the inventory boy does not make a mistake, this guy owes me one crore. Will I give a material to him? No way. Got it now? If you have sufficient material, then I would have given. But since I am not having sufficient material, what happens? He will not get the material at all. So the grouping zone does not contribute to allocation. So only six to nine will get the material and not seven. Is it clear, Thomas and Anita? Well, where is that decided, Nana? Because it, it is decided in prioritization zone. But prioritization zone as such as pass the information to the grouping zone. Right? <coughs> yes. <coughs> After so, prioritization only it passes now. If seven gets the material, the grouping zone will now club these two things and then keep it over there. Similarly, if two and nine are getting material, they will now keep it over there. Now. If seven is not given any material, six alone will be kept in the corner. Seven will not be kept at all. Two or nine will be grouped in one corner. Grouping zones purpose is only to group the available material in the appropriate groups. So that what happens, so that, the human does not make any mistake. As a here in, the, in the picking rule, is it? Uh, huh? no, the picking rule may not check that. Picking rule is... Picking rule, we had to come now. Fine, we had to come to the picking rule. We are only working on the prioritization room and then grouping zone. Prioritization zone and grouping zone only we are discussing now. Fine. The picking rule is yet to come now. So the prioritization zone has got the top priority. It decides which to allocate, which not to allocate. If there is a shortage, if there is no shortage, everybody will be allocated. And if there is a shortage, only what happens? Six, two, and nine are only going to be allocated, and not seven. Seven will not be allocated. Are you clear? Because it is based upon certain considerations. Two and nine has to be in group one. Six and seven has to be in group two. So yeah, then okay. it goes as two, nine, six. No, it is not so at all. Fine. Grouping zone does not come into the allocation of material at all. Out of all these things which are coming in, whichever is having the material, that will be grouped based upon what happens your, uh, your uh, what happens ISF and then USD. Fine. Initial ship from and then your ultimate ship to. 
they are going to be grouped where where it is going to ultimate shift to is the group to is a place where it is going to go so if a incoming material if a incoming detail has got a material it will not group and then keep it if it doesn't have a material it will not group at all seven he has got a very high outstanding and then what happens the prioritization is based upon the outstanding invoice let us say in which case what happens seven will not get a material since we have a shortage is it clear anita and uh, thomas yes yeah ma'am got it so grouping zone does not come for allocation at all it will only group the material if it has got materials fine otherwise what happens it will not be allocated at all now prioritization zone and grouping zone are complete now fine what happens if no come then what happens then comes the inventory picking rule the picking rule is going to what pick the item based upon the fifo lifo fine let us say we are not having a fifo there now i am here fifo means what the january stock is now kept over there afterwards february stock afterwards march stock so first in first out will now work upon what the first january it will now empty it afterwards what happens the next customer comes in what happens for the february then march so whichever has come from production first what happens it will be basically allocated fine so all these things club together is going to work upon now the filtering zone fine in this place what happens we have the filtering zone and then we have the prioritization zone we have the grouping zone and then we have the inventory picking zone all of them are going to work together actually all of them are going to work together now we'll now come down and then we'll now see this so the next tougher one now now what happens uh, at the filtering zone the prioritization zone the grouping zone and then the inventory picking zone all of them are going to work together actually so now what happens there are many details are there all the details put together need 1000 quantities metal required material available is only 1200 so for the management what happens the psgr the pixel grouping rule is not a significant one at all but what happens the release sequence rule which is there in the prioritization zone that the inventory picking rule the pr point the rsr and pr are the real or real ones for the management actually so their recommendations will be basically considered actually now in this case what happens rsr is going to give a recommendation the pr is also given a recommendation now tell me which is significant and then which is not significant in this case when i need 1000 quantities the available is only available is 1200 we have an excess rsr is going to sort out the incoming fine right? allocate first six afterwards two next afterwards nine next like this what happens is not going to give a recommendation the pr will now say what happens you pick up the january for production first and then after february production afterwards march production like that what happens it will not say now tell me out of these two which is significant which is not significant for the management actually rsr is significant or not pr is significant or not first we will not talk about rsr i need 1000 quantities i have an excess quantity available in the inventory so rsr's recommendation is significant or not anybody both the recommendations are not significant now any of you both are not significant is wrong both are not significant is wrong yeah uh, maybe the pr uh, may have a little higher significance because of this? Uh, uh, thomas nana no, no. okay, yeah. uh, you, you first of all let us not discuss about the rsr now right? rsr is it significant or not no rsr uh, it is not significant because yeah, uh, correct. Uh, rsr is not significant tell me why you have to tell uh, me because you know my requested quantity is 100 but my material availability is 1200 1200 yeah okay so, so if i uh, go by any release sequence like sell sorter criteria or shipping yeah. criteria yeah okay, yeah uh, material will be available for my uh, requested quantity exactly he is very correct tushar is very correct so whichever way the rsr is going to give a prioritization what happens all the details will be getting material so since all the details are going to get material rsr's recommendation is not significant for the management now tell me about pr now fine tell me about pr pr's recommendation picking rules recommendation is it significant or not out of 1200 what happens only 1000 is going to go out now pr will now say first empty january then afterwards february afterwards march like that it is going to say give a recommendation is it significant or not 
Uh, in case if I am uh, looking for you know lipper people and my mm. material uh, production date is different, mm. uh, in this case uh, PR actually I have significant because I want to clear out older uh, material. If uh, the material is produced on the same date, uh, then it is not significant. No, actually material is produced on different dates, and then what happens? There is no stock in your inventory on different dates actually. It yeah, is. Then in this case, suppose I you know I uh, prefer lipper people. Yeah. Uh, for example, last in uh, Lipo, so I want to uh, pick based upon my criteria. Yeah. So uh, I will try to ship the old material like that one based exactly. upon the manager. Or based upon the Lipo or whatever it is. So, fine. Here in this case, what happens? Sir? PR is recommendation is significant because not all the quantities is going to go out now. There are certain quantities which are going to remain on the inventory, and so what happens? Sir? Which has to be shipped? The PR's recommendation is significant actually. No, go on and do it now. Fine, go that is more or less. So the RSR is not significant, and then PR is significant is 100 percent correct. Now I have a what happens? Sir? There's a case number two. I have required quantity is 700. The material availability is only 500. Tell me about RSRs and PRs recommendations. <clears throat> RSRs and PRs recommendations. What will happen? I have a lesser quantity. Both are significant, man. Both are significant is wrong. Uh, and if I come to RSR first, RSR first. Okay, you come to. I requested quantity is seven hundred, and my material availability is five hundred. So I have less uh, inventory. Yeah. Uh, uh, compared to my requested quantity, so I'll try to fulfill which are my priority orders. Exactly. Very correct. So he will not try to fulfill his priority orders for me. So not everything will be going out. Rather, everybody will be getting a material, and so what happens? RSR is significant, but what about PR? Uh, PR will not be significant because uh, you know the material is less. So I have to ship out all the mat five hundred. Exactly. Then, <laughs> all the material will not go out of inventory, and so what happens? You empty January first, afterwards February first, afterwards March first, whichever way you do. What happens? Everything is going out. So Tushar is hundred percent correct now. Fine. Announce yourself as a friend of Tushar. Fine. Go there. Control. Now what happens? I will not ban Tushar now. Fine. Tushar will not answer the final question. Fine. Others, please try. I have M50 quantities, and then what happens? I have the exact availability in my inventory. Tell me about RSR's recommendation first. Anybody else? RSR will be significant or not significant? First RSR. Finally, I think I'm getting it right. Both are not significant. You are saying both are not significant. Fine. Who is they? Thomas, no. Thomas. Thomas is saying that both are not significant now. Fine. Anybody else has got any other answers now? Thomas has told that both of them are not significant now. Anybody else? Anyway, any other answers now? Okay, we'll now check Thomas' answer now. Fine, go there. Control that. Even though he failed on all the intermediate one, finally the finals he has passed, and then he won the cup actually. <laughs> both are not significant. Is hundred percent correct. So what happens? Since we have an exact quantity, RSR is going to say what happens. You allocate this first. You allocate next. What happens? Whatever, it, whatever we they are doing. What happens? RSR is insignificant. Similarly, PR. Everything is going out. Fine, go there. This is what is. Have you understood this concept now? Fine. RSR and PR. Good. Fine. It is a very tough topic, and so what happens? You have to concentrate a lot and then learn it. Now, fine, go there. So what is? So let us now first of all create the RSR and then PSGR in 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 EBIS as well as in Fusion. Fine, let us go there and create now. Fine, go there. So we will now create this rules. Fine, go there. Close it now. You go to the shipping, and then you go to the setups, and then you go to the picking now. <clears throat> fine, go there. You go to the picking. Fine. Define RSR. Fine. Define RSR as the one. Fine, go there. So navigation now shipping setup picking define RSR as the navigation fine double click on it let us go on the page and go there I will not say P50 underscore RSR and then here what happens I go and then give that what happens the scheduled ship date now fine go there this is one let us say this is now one fine this is the one and then this is two this is three this is four and then if you want to give order also what happens both order number as well as outstanding invoice values are mutually exclusive. And if you go on and give it up, what happens? This will go away. If you give one over here, that will go away. So at the maximum, four of them can only be a priority for the for sequencing for for what happens allocation priority decision. 
the parallelization can be done only for one of the flows. And then here, what happens if you go and then give phi, what happens? It will not accept at all. If you give phi, it's not accepted. Fine. If at all you give outstanding invoice value, it has to be only one. It has to be only one. If outstanding invoice value is selected, what happens? It cannot have any other thing. And then the lowest value is one. Fine. You cannot give any other thing. If this is present, it has to be one. Fine. Okay. And then what happens? Uh, the order number can be anything. So we have to discuss the inclined about how he wants to prioritize basically or the incoming details, basically schedule should be or order number or outstanding invoice or shipment priority, or whatever it is fine, go that and give it happen. So here what happens, I will not give only one the well, I find the remaining I will not give more. For this example, what happens? A simple one. I'm doing it fine. Go that. So the RSR is wrong created. Let us now go on and create the PSGR. Fine, go that. Define PSGR. The PSGR I'm going to define enough. The same navigation just want to forget and go that. Let me create it. Let's go that. So P50. Let's go PSGR. Go there, I will not say order number and then afterwards subsort on the customer, subsort on ship to find by which order I'm going to group it. How you are going to how you want to group them and then keep it in the proper manner. Let's commit. So let us now go and then define in fusion these two rules. Find the RSR as well as the PSGR. Let us now go there and define it in fusion. Let's define it. Go there. It's P50. <coughs> Let's go to EMP1 and then it's for a field one, two, three. Enter in now. <coughs> I click on it and then I put in setup and maintenance. Let us define the RSR now. Define what that it is. A release sequence role. It's a managed release sequence role. Manage RSR so now. And click on it. And then let me create a rule. So let me go on then create a rule. And click on plus now. <clears throat> I will not say uh, P50 underscore RSR. So priority one is basically what happens. Uh, I will not say sales order number. So he also had got five priorities. Ascending and descending can give it now. And then give all these things. Outstanding in one value. The same concept of place. I'm not going to give only one. <clears throat> go there, take part of it. Another description. So the RSR is not defined fine. It's even closer. You must enter at least one release sequence priority. Fine. Go there. You must enter at least a, what happens, a sorting order. Fine. Go there. Oh, nothing has been entered. Fine. Go there. Either one. I will make it as ascending order. Then that was default actually. Fine. Go there. Now make it fine. Click on save and close. So by which what happens, the RSR. Now we'll now go for the PSGR. I click on done now. Let's go for that. PSGR. Let us pick slip grouping. Pick slip grouping. So manage pick slip grouping rules. Now go there. <coughs> now click on plus now. And then I will now give a simple sort for that. Fine. Group by sales or now. That's what is happening now. Go there. It's P50 underscore what happens at PSGR. Pick slip grouping rules. Only one I'm giving. So depending upon the requirement, what happens? You know, group sub sub uh, sort sub sort sub sort, and then group it together. So that what happens? The inventory boys does not make any mistakes. So we are now completed these two tough parts. Fine. Now we are going to go into what happens. The next part is what the release fine PR. That is even a tougher than this. Fine. That is tougher than this. Let us go there and do it. Lotus. So we are going to see the PR. So what I will do is I will now create a new sales order for a testing of the PR engine. If I go there, you go there, and then go to the sales orders now. So go there. It's eleven forty-three, and then give it a tap, and then you go to the lines region. Let me put the item over here. Now find P fifty percentage ish percentage, and then give it a tap. Quantity is one now. Now the requested date is today. Find requested date is today. It's twenty ninth May. If I go there, it's twenty ninth May. Go there. I will not create 10 such lines now. Fine. Shift F5 and then go there. I will not make two quantities now. I will not make 10 such lines. Shift F5, go there. It is even very tough when compared to the previous things which are seen. And go there. Three. Shift F5 and then go for four. <coughs> Shift F5 and then go for five now. Shift F5, go for six. Shift F5, go for seven. <coughs> Shift F5, go for eight. Shift F5, you go for 9. And then Shift F5, you go for 10. 
and then let me ship the request to date by one one more. There's no request on 29th May. This is now done on 30th May. If I give a home now, delete, delete 30th, and then down arrow. Home, <clears throat> delete, delete 31st, and then here, give a home now. It is uh, 1st of June. Now. 01-JUN and down arrow. So let me first of all copy these numbers to everywhere now. Paste it over here. Home. <clears throat> delete, delete. 0 to down arrow. Paste it. And then go home now. Fine. 0 3. <clears throat> Paste it. Go home. Delete, delete. 0 4. And down arrow. <clears throat> Paste it home. Delete it zero five. Go there. And then this is paste it home. Delete it zero six. And then down arrow. And then paste it home. Delete it zero seven. Damn it. <coughs> let us complete this exercise and then call it because it may not be completed by ten fifteen. Now fine. Maybe ten twenty or ten twenty five. Fine. Let us not complete this exercise because what happens? You have to understand this very clearly. Let us complete this and then call it a day now. So what happens? We need items on different, different dates. Ten different shipments are there on different dates. Fine, click on book now. So when you book it, before booking it, what happens? We now have a look at the what happens, the dates on which what happens, the inventory calendar is going to work now. Because shipping is inventory org specific now. Fine, go there, go to the inventory, and then go to the setup organization calendars now. So go to the setup organization calendars. And then let us now query for the vision now. Fine, go there, it's a VIS percentage and query it now. The orders and then go to the dates now. Fine, uh, it is the uh, 29th, is uh, what happens, uh, 27th, the uh, second. I don't know, go to the June also. Fine, all the dates must be a working day actually. Fine, we are now on 29th, so second is a holiday, is now is a working day now. Fine, go there in June. We'll now see the fine on uh, June. Uh, what happens? I'm in June now, fine. June, uh, second Saturday, fine, third, and then ninth, and then all other working days. So, if it is a holiday, what happens? It cannot ship at all. Fine. You must ensure that what happens all the these all the days are basically holiday. I already shifted it actually. Fine. I just wanted to show you that what happens. The days are working day as far as what happens. The, uh, the vision zero one calendar is concerned. So shipping is basically holiday specific. Fine. If there is a holiday, it will not ship at all. Fine. Now let us go and book the order. It's already working day now. Fine. They have made everything as a working day. So let us now go and book it. So on 29th, we want it. So customer wants on different different dates on different different item. Fine, click on book order. So the scheduled ship date will be automatically populated the requested date actually. The scheduled ship date will be populated to the requested date. Fine, go there and then have a look at it. Fine, go to the links. And then here what happens? You can now see 29th. You now see 29th. You can ship it. 30th, 30th. Fine, go there. We are now going to see all the sticks. <clears throat> now there are four ways of RSR. Now. Fine, uh, we are going to do the what happens? The PR rather. There are, we are going to do the picking, not PR. We will now say RSO release sales orders. There are four ways of release sales order. We will now go on and see the four ways of sales order releases. We are going to release the sales order. So you go to the shipping and then go to the transaction form. After completing these four ways, what happens? We will now call it a day now. Uh, uh, maybe 10 25 or also. Go there. We'll now finish it off in one go. go there. And then drop it off. And then query for it. Click on find. The first way of release sales order. The first way of release sales order. Fine, go there. I'm not keeping my customer on the first one. And then what happens? I go to the tools and then I go to the pick release form. Tools pick release form is the first way of releasing the sales order. Fine, go to the pick release form. Tools pick release form is the one I'm going with that. Now it comes to the three zones. Fine. First is a filtering zone. Next is a, what's called the prioritization zone. Next is a grouping zone. So you go there and then give it more. Fine, go there. Order. So before we do it, what happens? We go and then what happens? I fill up the things with our profit parameters. Go there. You go there. What happens? Shipping. You go to the setups and then go to the shipping parameters now. And go to the shipping parameters now. And then let us now populate with our values from the pick release. What happens? I now say P50 and then give it a tap. This is also what happens. P50 give it a tap. So we populate our release sequence rule as well as the pick rule in the shipping parameters. So that will be basically doing it now. And go there. Go there. Go there. Go there. Close it now. Now we come over here. I am now keeping my customer on the first one and then go to the tools and then go to the pick release form. It's the release sales order actually. So in this one, what happens? I am now going to give a scheduled ship date. Now he is saying from 1st of May, 80 to what happens? Uh, uh, 25th of May. He is now having what happens? Uh, the middle availability, everything. 
so after having filled up the filtering zone what happens he will now directly go to the inventory zone there he will now populate the barrows the barrows is what p50 and then if you give a tab the moment he populates the barrows what happens the barrows the psgr will now come over here in the shipping what happens the rsr will now come automatically now tell me whether this detail will be picked or not i kept my cursor on the first one and then what happens i in the filtering zone i have given a filtering criteria what pick which is having a scheduled ship date from 1st may to 25th may whether it will not pass the filtering zone or not the deal what i did is what i kept my cursor on the first line which is having a scheduled ship date of what 29th uh, 29th of may remember so will it pass the filtering zone or not anybody the inventory in charge has now given a filtering criteria what the scheduled ship dates from and to uh, anybody <clears throat> will it pass or not only when it passes what happens the shipping zone will now prioritize it and then afterwards the inventory will now group it so whether it will now pass through the filtering zone or not anybody it will not it will not yeah that it will not it will not is 100 percent correct now because what happens up to 25th only so what happens these two zones do not have any work at all when you click on the concurrent what happens the pick selection this generation concurrent is not going to run now and go that will have an overhead of and go that the pick selection list generation is going to run so there is no running and it will not have any work at all now let it come and then what happens it will not i'll not show it to you there is no completed fine go there close it now and then if i refresh this line what happens nothing would happen fine control from what happens it not even touched it so the first way of for us or release sales order is not complete the second way of sales order what happens if you have multiple lines to be picked right now what the shipping in charge is not going to give a control and then you select it and then what happens you select multiple lines like this with the control and select it so if you have multiple lines tools pick release form cannot be used at all this way of doing the release sales order is not possible if you click on it what happens it is not free so when you have a multiple selection this will not work it will work only for single selection so in case of a single selection he will not put any filtering criteria at all if is a single selection what happens the filtering criteria will be absent actually, because only single line and so what happens these two zones will also be having a very simple work as such what happens it will be very very proper so filtering zone will be absent if it is a single criteria just for understanding purpose i put a one and go there now what happens i allow multiple selections and go there the control what happens the first line is selected the second line is also done so here what happens i go to the actions and then here what happens i go to the launch pick release now find the way what happens i don't launch it actions launch pick release so once when i do it what happens it will now automatically pick fine it will now what happens it will now run the concurrent fine it will now directly run once when it is a launch pick release what happens it will now launch the pick release and then what happens it will now get the move order it will now lock it and then what happens it will now bring it to the staging area directly so for which what happens we have to make it automatic now fine go there so before i do it what happens i go there i will now go to the shipping parameters now fine go to the shipping and then go to the steps and then go to the shipping parameters now and then let me make everything automatic now so here what happens in the second tab widget let me say auto create deliveries is on auto unlock it is also on if i give these two things on what happens it will now automatically what happens unlock it as well as what happens the deliveries will be automatically created go there and go there close it now so here what happens i go there and then do it now and go there let me do the launch pick list no what happens the pick list form will not be coming the same sort of the three tab regions will not be coming it will not do automatically i have selected multiple things and then click on go now so the moment i go it what happens it will be running now the psgl will be running now when pick selection list generation character will be running now the psgl will be running and then once when it is completed what happens you know see both the things are come because we have sufficient quantities in the inventory what happens there is no question of any you know, what happens back ordering or anything like that and go there go there so there are four ways of release sales order now we are in the second way now any doubts till now so when you have multiple selections we have to go via second wave only the second wave is only one we are doing so pick selection list generation is not running and go there and complete it when if you go on that what happens if you refresh it now and go there and refresh control of one i am refreshing it what happens it will be staged and then pick confirmed with the delivery page now the jujube ones are completed we will go for the tougher ones find the third one is a tougher one now. the third one of release sales order i'm going to do it now and go there go to the window and then go to the navigator now and go there the third one is what shipping release sales orders release sales orders so here what happens 
your company will be booking orders continuously let us say <clears throat> is not earning doing continuously and then in that case what happens uh, let us say it takes it has to pick the material it has to clean it and then it has to pack it and then affix the name plate details and then take the net weight gross weight etc etc there are so many staging activities are there and it takes approximately let us say two days to complete all the activities so in the release sales orders what they will do is you know go there you will not go open that what happens you will not say by default when i open the release sales order it says what the two date is today's date and then the requested date is today date. that means what whatever has to go today has to be picked whatever has to go up to today whatever has to go up to today has to be picked fine go that that is the way it works and then what happens you will know this is automatically coming and then they will know open up this and then go to the inventory and then they will know populate your inventory now fine go there whatever the psgr gets populated over here in this place the rsr gets populated over here fine the remaining order ship everything is now coming and then afterwards what happens they will know accept this default fine whatever has to go today pick it fine those orders so this is the way they run the rsr so whenever what happens it will be run on every 3 hours or every 4 hours no 4 hours what happens they will know say whatever has to go today uh so many sales orders fine at 10 o'clock what happens somebody has asked for today and then afterwards 10:15 what happens somebody has asked for day after tomorrow that will not be picked and then something else fine so anybody who is asking up to today what happens it will be picked that is the way they do it so here what i will do is i will now have what happens a date like what happens it is a 1st of june fine 01 june 18 and then from and then what happens i will now say 02 june 18 fine just for understanding of us i'm putting it So normally, what happens? They will open up this form and then put the inventory in charge and then click on the concurrent directory. So to, just to demonstrate about how it's going to be, fine. Go there. I will now say what happens first of June. I will now go there and see this. Uh, go to the window and then in the what happens? I will now take up the last one. So go to the what's called shipping transaction form. And then uh, here, where is the scheduled ship date here? I will now write it. This is the column. I can go there. Go to the folders and then go to the show field now. I'll say scheduled ship date. So let me put it down. Scheduled ship date. Or any scheduled ship date is not there at all. I will not try to put the requested date now. Requested date. Requested by you. I will now put date here. Percentage date. Percentage. Date requested. I'm going to click on okay. And let me add it. Is now asking on different different dates actually. So these two. So let us now take from fourth and what happens fifth. Uh, uh, let us now for demonstration purpose what happens. The four uh, or uh, okay uh, the fourth and fifth. I am going to take it. I'm go to this place and then I am go to the what's called shipping transaction form. No, I'm sorry. I'm go to the one and then release this. I'm go to the fourth and fifth of uh, uh, fourth and fifth. You go there and then put fourth and then here what happens? You put fourth and fourth and fourth. I'm not putting it. You go there. Ah, from train thirtieth, everything is there. No, I'm going. I'm not putting fourth and fourth. I'm going. Let me launch it now. Fourth and fourth. I'm launching it now. So fourth and fourth. Let me launch it. So once when I launch it, what happens? Based upon this, what happens? It will be picked. So normally, what happens? They will not modify any scheduled ship dates today as well as request date. Right? Whatever is now having a request date or scheduled ship date today, what happens? It will be picked. Click on cancel now. So just to demonstrate it, what happens? I'm putting it now. Fine. I'm now giving a warning that what happens? So many things are not put under any filtering. So it will be it will be resulting in so many uh, orders getting picked early. Is actually fine. Go there. Click on OK. And then we'll now look at the what happens? Concurrent now. So the PSGR is now coming. It will now be now. I have now simulated a situation which what happens is there is no back ordering at all. Actually, the shipping is a very very tough topic. Actually, my students are suffering even now. They say that whenever we get a ticket on shipping, what happens? Is they break their heads. Actually, fine. I have in fact what happens is normally used to demonstrate so many complex scenarios in the shipping. Actually, in my EBS training, and then I go there, and then it will not run. So once when this completed, what happens? You can now see the details which are having the fourth and fifth. What happens? It will be done. The final one is even tougher, tough now. I go there. Not completed. I go there. Close it now. Go there. And then control F one. If you see it, what happens? You go there. The fourth and fifth will be pick released actually. So it is not shipped also. The fourth one is shipped also. Fine because everything is now automatic actually. Fine. Go there. The fourth and then the fifth one. Why it is not taken? Oh God. Uh, that is because of the timing actually. Fine. 
Uh, even though we request on 12, 12, 39, what happens? The schedule should be just 23 hours and 59 minutes because of which what happens? It has not been picked at all. I must have given a proper timing. Actually. And that's why what happens? It's not even picked. That is the reason that it is not done. I will not go to the control floor one. If you go and see it, what happens? That is not even picked actually. Now, what happens? Even the ITS is running. Fine, go there. It is not coming. Now, the fourth one is a very tough one in which what happened, the release rule will not come into picture. The release rule is going to come into picture. So let us now define the next rule called release rule. So the filtering zone does not have any rule actually. Find the prioritization zone, the grouping zone, and then what happens, we are now going to define the release rule also. Find the third rule, we are going to create it now. So the third one, we are going to create it now. So we have got five activities to be done on this now in Fusion actually. Find RSR is not done. The PSGR is not done. Fine. The ship confirmation rule is the next one now. Fine, that will be coming. We'll be coming to it tomorrow. Now. now we are going to go for the last one on the one on the release. Uh, what happens? The release rule. Now. Fine, go there. So on the picking side, this is on the shipping side actually. This is on the shipping side. So on the picking side, what happens? The fourth rule is not going to come up. The release rule. Fine, go there. Let us now go on them. Create the release rule. Now. Fine, go to the window and then go to the navigator. Now. Fine, go to the window and then go to the navigator. Now. Fine, go there. So here, what happens? You go there. Go to the shipping and then go to the uh, what happens? Setups now and then go to the picking now. Shipping setup and then go to the picking now. <clears throat> you try to listen to me very carefully, find the very complex one, and then is a defined release rule. I will not explain anything on the fusion now because I am explaining everything here now. So fusion, I will not go on then directly set up the rule only. Find the defined release rule. So I will not say 50 P50 underscore RR. Now, what happens? Whenever uh, let us say it's not going to take so two days for you to do the what happens staging activities. So normally what happens, they will not say start within zero days. And then what happens, they will not say end with the two days. Like here, what happens, the timing is also coming fine, 23 colon 59. And then here, what happens, they will not say 23 colon, what happens, they will not say end within two days. And then put the timing as what, 23 colon 59. So this is the filtering criteria, they will be doing it. And then what happens, the inventory, they will not go and then put the volume. Fine, go the P50 and then give a tap. Then go to the order state. These are the ones which are going to be picked. So they will not make a release rule, and then what happens on the RSO? What happens? They will not tell me. Now, go the control commit. So it will be done. So for our example, what I will do is I will now make a different one now. Fine, go there. So uh, what happens? We have not done the first, second, first of second. Uh, what I have done is I have already done the picking of what. So it's not coming in a random order. I don't know why it's. <clears throat> First June, second June, third June. The 28th May is now coming over here now. So, uh, which is no stage now? Fine. This is no stage. The second June is also stage now. Fine. Go there. So, the first and second June are staged actually. Fine. Go there. So, the 29th, uh, what happens? It is not staged actually. Fine. I should have taken these two things instead of first and second June because I don't know how it has come in the top actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is what is. So what I will do is I will now say 6th and 7th June, I want to take it up. I want to pick it up. So 29th is 0th day. Fine. 29th is 0th day. Fine. And then what happens? It will be uh, first day, the second day. And then what happens? It will be having different days. Now. Fine. I will now say 8 and 9. Fine. I got 10 details now. Fine. I will now say 9 and 10. Actually. Fine. I will now say start with the 9 and 10. So that what happens? I want to have the 6th and 7th June to be picked up. Fine. 9th and 10th. I will now go there and there. Go to the window and then here, what happens? I go to the release room and then here, what happens? I will say start on ninth day. This cannot be bigger than this. So I will not say ninth day and then it is 23 colon 59. And then here it is a tenth day now. I have got 10 days. So I go there. It is 23 colon 59. And then come in and go there. By which, what happens? My release rule is no made. So ninth and tenth day is the one by which, what happens? The release rule is no made. And go there, close it now. Now, what I can do is I will now go to this page. I will go there. I will now go there. I want sixth and seventh to be picked at you. Go, there. go to there, what's called the navigator now. And then I will now open up this now. Fine, go there, go to the shipping. And then you go to the what's called release sales orders, release sales orders. And then let me populate my rule over here on top. Fine. P50 and then give a tab now. So the moment I populate the group, what happens? You can now see the seventh and eighth coming up automatically. So the moment, what happens the ninth and tenth day? So it will be normally zero on two days or zero or one day uh, like that. What happens the beginning? Again. So if you go on that, what happens? You go to the inventory afterwards. What happens? Everything is already there in the rule. The rule is having the in the warehouse also fine. Go there and then launch it. The days which are having seventh and eighth day will be automatically picked. Yeah, Click on concurrent and then do it now. Yeah. The fourth way of sales only.
go the then we have a different number. So let us now go go to this thing and then create a release rule also. I go that is fine. Percentage release percentage rule. So let us now create the release rule now. Go that. So manage pick wave release rules. I go that. Let us now take that. So so here pick on plus and then let me create the release rule. <coughs> So the rule name is what p50 underscore rel underscore rule now, and then here what happens? Uh, I will not what happens? Do any on the dates basically? I will not give anything on the dates now basically, uh, because what happens is only uh, applicable only mainly for order management actually. But we are not testing on the order management, and so what happens? Uh, starts on or starts within starts within. So this I am not going to choose anything at all. Or in other words, what happens? I will not use the release rule at all. So we can even give the shipping priority or items, all these things at that time. Uh, this way, what happens? We had to create it now actually. Uh, but what happens? I will not use the release rule at all in this case because what happens? This is applicable mainly only for what happens order management. So I will not create a release rule because this is of no. I will not say starts within what happens zero days, and then what happens? I will not say your timing also fine. Go there, and then here what happens? It ends within I will not say two days. <sighs> And then if you try to save, I think the timing is a must, I think. And if you give a save and close, it will not ask for the timing, I think. Or oh, it's not actually. You must provide what happens the value for the article should be shipped in it. Uh, we go there. And then uh, give what happens the 23 colon 59. And then here also what happens we give. Oh, again, PM and AM and the given fine. Go there. PM if you give it, go there. It is 11.59 PM. 11.59 PM. Fine. And then uh, what happens? It asks for the f ship from organization. Now, fine. It is a P five zero one. This is also required as such. This is what else? And then go then give it now. Fine. The, the way I'm giving it now. Fine. Click on save and close. So here, what happens in this place? We give what <coughs> the inventory tab region. We give the inventory R. So here also, what happens on the on the place? What happens? We go there and see now on the navigator now. So on the release sales orders. What happens? We give the inventory org also. Fine. That is why what happens is now asking here also by the same thing. Fine. The inventory org has to be specified over here. Fine. So that is the inventory org. And then uh, what happens? This is all okay. Fine. Go there, queue and save and close. So by which what happens? You are not going to use it now. Anyway, what happens? Because it is mainly applicable only for the sales orders, not for the more transfer orders. Actually. So the third activity is now complete. We now go there and see the speaking now. Fine. Go there, control F1. If you want to have a look at it. The seventh and then the eighth has to be picked now. Fine, go the seventh is there. What happened to the eighth? Was there no? Eighth is not visible at all. Seventh is only there. I made a mistake or something like that. Fine, go there. So seventh and eighth. Okay, fine. Whatever it is. So by which what happens? It gets picked actually. That is the fourth we are picking. So this release rule will be extensively used by the companies where what happens? They will be uh, having picking of zero to one days actually. Are you all clear upon this now? Anybody? Anybody has got any doubts? I've taken some extra time easily because what happens? I want to complete all the four ways of pick releasing actually. So we have now completed what? The release sequence rule we have completed. The pick slip grouping rule we have completed. The release rule also we have completed. Next is what? Tomorrow we are going to begin with another tough topic of called ship confirmation proof as well as finally shipping parameters. But shipping parameters I was parallel setting up in EBIS. Whereas what happens in Fusion, I'm going to set up last now because I'm not working with order management shipping, but I'm working with the transfer order shipping and so what happens, I know, use it last time. So two more things has to be set now. Once when we set, what happens, we can now do the activity in uh, what happens in uh, uh, Fusion actually. So tomorrow, we'll now, first of all, set up the shipping ship confirmation rule in, uh, uh, in, in EBIS and then see how complex it is now. And then afterwards, what happens? We'll now jump into uh, fusion and then set up and then start our transfer order activities in fusion. Is it clear? It's a very tough one, isn't it? It's not an easy one. Even there are even still more tougher things are there. Basically, it is not so easy as it is. Even still tougher more things are there. Actually. Hello, anybody? <laughs> Nobody is even answering me actually. Anita, is it clear? Yes, sir. Very good, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Actually, you? today today we were working on Fusion OM. Ha, 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 ha. We, so we very have, good, have just started working on it. Very good, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. That's fine. 
Thomas is clear. Arivu is clear. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. So tomorrow we are going to see the ship confirmation rule, and then afterwards, what happens? We see the interface trip stop. Right? The interface trip stop. Right? That is again a very tough. Actually, entire shipping is very tough. It's not a very easy one at all. And then afterwards, we will not set up those things, and then we will not uh, do the activity in uh, Fusion actually. Good. Then we will not meet tomorrow, and then we will not continue on this. Bye for now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, welcome back all of you. Nana here and then uh, we are into a fusion inventory and then uh, shipping implementation. You can write to me for any clarification. Nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. Then uh, what happens? We are now into uh, transfer orders now. Fine. So we are now completed the certain setups now. Fine. We are now continuing with the setups. So let us now go there and then start our activity on this day now. <sighs> Go to what your uh, transfer orders. This one. <sighs> go there. Okay, transfer orders uh, prerequisites. So one. So we go there and see the strong point. So here, uh, what happens is that one of my student has got struck. Fine. In our previous implementation company, what happens? He got struck, and then it was not getting created. And then uh, what happens? I tested, I set it all these things, and then afterwards it started working actually. And I don't know whether everything is required or not. Some steps may be superfluous. And so what happens? You just see to it that what happens if you are having a problem, you ensure that what happens? All these setups are basically done properly. And then afterwards it started working for him now. And somewhere some six months back. And so uh, you have to see. Fine. Sometimes it doesn't work. And then uh, you have to because he was working for a Dubai client, and then uh, they wanted this transfer order to be immediately working. So we, uh, I took around almost uh, two hours for me to identify the problems basically. Fine, here and there I found it and then I, I activated the problem. So uh, now what happens in this place, we have now done the release sequence rule and then uh, we have done what the pick slip grouping rule. These two things have been done now, fine. Uh, then what happens, we are now going to go, then uh, the release rule is also made now, fine. The three things are now, right. now we are going to go for the ship confirmation rule. We are going to have a look at the ship confirmation rule. So we will now go there and see this now. Uh, and then if you go and then see in this place, <coughs> we are into ship confirmation rule now. <coughs> so uh, you go to the eBus documentation and then go to the OM now, fine. You go to the day four. And then here, you go and then see this now, fine. So there is one document called interface trip stop, fine. interface trip stop. So if you go and then have a look at it now, fine. Go to the interface trip stop, fine. There is an equivalent program of this in, uh, in Fusion actually, fine, go there. So the sales order line will be having a ready release. And then what happens once when you launch it? What happens? It will be staged quickly, and then afterwards it goes to pick the now. And then afterwards, what happens? Uh, you uh, you are going to close the uh, thing now. Fine, go there. Now here, what happens? Ship confirmation is now going to come up. Fine. The ship confirmation is now going to come up. So let us go and then create our ship confirmation rule now. And go there. So let us now first of all create the ship confirmation rule in Ebus now. And go there. We are going to create now. So go to the shipping and then go to the steps. And then here, what happens? You go to the ship confirmation rules directly. So the navigation is shipping setup ship confirmation rule, which what happens? We will not create our own rule now. I go the double click on it. And then I will now say P50 underscore ship underscore confirm rule. <coughs> fine. Now making it now. Fine. Go there. So, so here, this part, fine. Uh, what happens? The uh, uh, action of what? This will be explained only in an order management training, actually. Fine. And then uh, unspecific quantities, all these things is a very tough topic actually. Right? It will be done. And then I don't know how it has all been done in order management. Fine, go there. And then you go there, you know, making what? Set delivery in transit. I'm going to remove it now. <laughs> and then here I'm removing it as well as what happens. I'm not, I'm not going to close the trip also. Fine, go there. So these two things, I'm not going to do it now. Fine. With this, I will not go on and make a check. Fine, control commit by which what happens. My ship confirmation rule is not done. Set delivery in transit and then oh, my, close the trip is not enabled for this now. Fine, go there, close it now. And then now, what happens? Well, go to the shipping parameters now. You go to the shipping, you go to the setups, and then go to the shipping parameters now. So, in the shipping parameters, what happens? You go there, and then you'll not work for this organization of P50 is a ship arc in which what happens? You'll not go and then put the ship confirmation. You go to the shipping transaction form. Here, what happens? You go and then populate it now. 
So here in EBIS, once when you put the ship confirmation rule, what happens? The picking is separate and then shipping is separate. Whereas in fusion, if you put the populate the ship confirmation rule on the shipping parameters, what happens? It does the picking and shipping together. Right? Picking has got two parts. Fine. I got one document on this now. One second. One document on this. Uh, go back one level. Fine. I forgot about the document being there also. <clears throat> Something on shipping actually. Uh, no, no, EBS also, if you know, uh, there is auto ship confirmation. If you uh, define the picking rule, uh, there also, if, if you put the uh, shipping parallel rule also it will do the same confirmation automatically. Yeah. In the sales order form, I will tell you where exactly it is. No point. Where the pick and ship is there, but what happens by default? What happens? It is the separate picking and separate shipping actually. Uh, whereas here, what happens? It is automatic. If you go to the shipping, no point. Go there. No. Yeah, in EBS we can we can control. Either we want to only pick and then ship, or we want to pick ship. So we can yeah, control. that's what I'm saying. Here, what happens by putting it? Fine, this is orders. Fine, fusion order entry and then fusion shipping execution. Fine. The pick release process is what create the pick wave movement request as well as what happens the confirm picks. Fine, this is a separate process. And then ship confirmation is a separate process. But if you put the shipping rule over here, if you go on then what happens? You populate your ship confirmation rule on the shipping parameters. Now here, what happens? Both of them are automatic actually. In EBS, it is not so. Right. Just by putting this rule, what happens? EBS is not automatic. Right. EBS is not automatic. EBS says what? By default, what happens? You pick first and then afterwards you ship next. Actually. But if you want, you can do pick and ship also in EBS. Right. You are going to do all the options here. What happens? The option is not there. If you are putting the ship confirmation rule on the shipping parameters, what happens is the pick and ship is totally automatic. That's how they have made it. Clear this up? No less. So uh, these are the rules which are not doing it. We are now completed what happens, the release sequence rule, the pick shipping rule, and then what happens, the release rule is also created. The final rule is what the ship confirmation rule. So we are in the, the process now. This is how it works. Now. And then one more thing uh, which I find is that what happens, the movement request which is now created with the pick wave movement request, I am unable to see, visualize it in, uh, in Fusion as such. Uh, somebody make an R&D and this is not fine because it's not visible as such now. Fine. This is not visible. <clears throat> And then it takes what happens, uh, and we have an option of what creating the movement request separately and then confirming it separately. That option is available in Fusion, whereas in EBS it is not so. EBS we cannot do it. Fine. The pick release and pick confirmation are totally automatic. In EBS, what happens? Uh, both of them are done together. Actually, we cannot split it at all. We cannot split it at all. Whereas in Fusion, what happens? Uh, they have the option of what you pick, uh, you create the movement request first, and then afterwards later you confirm it. Fine. Confirmation can be done later. What happens once when you put the ship confirmation rule on your shipping parameters, everything becomes automatic actually. Right? This is what is. So there are some changes here and there. Right? So we have to what happens with it. Go there. Now it is not done. Fine. Go there. It's not completed. Fine. Go there. I have not completed. Fine. Go there. Let us now create a sales order for doing. Fine. Go there. Go to the orders and returns and go to the sales orders now. <clears throat> so let me get a sales order for this now. I will now put what happens 1143 as a customer now. 1143 as a customer. And you can see what happens. This is our all. Fine. Go there. Go to the line items and then I will now populate the item over here now. Fine. The P50 ship item, I'm going to have it now. Fine. Go there. Let me have some two or three lines now. Fine. Go there. P50 percentage. Shh, percentage. And then give it a now. Ship item. I'm going to do it. Fine. Go there. One quantity and then give it down arrow. I'm not worried about the dates as such. Now. Fine. <clears throat> so there are four ways of PRing which you have seen now. Fine. Uh, and uh, we have to experiment it once when order management is now complete. Fine. So what happens, I will now learn order management other time, what happens, I'll be uh, testing it along with the OM part actually. Fine. So there are four ways of PRing, all the, all the things will be tested by me. And uh, Anita has uh, agreed to what happens, uh, uh, create a document because she's also learning order management now. So once when she completes it, what happens, she'll be helping me with the, the documentation so that what happens, I will now start to prepare my OM <coughs> training as such. Because I always wanted to go for a full length actually, fine. not that uh, what happens, any uh, Preliminary, what happens? Uh, this thing, that thing, and I must get the what happens instance also for it now. Actually, that's another thing. The shift F5, <coughs> go there. I'll now have some four lines. I'll go there. Then commit. I'm just commit. So, by which what happens? The, the thing is now made. And, go there. and then here, I'll now book the order by which what happens? The thing goes to what? <coughs> the scheduled ship date will be populated upon this now. Order is booked now. <coughs> you go to the lines region, and then here, what happens? I will see what happens. The scheduled ship date is now. And go there. The orders. So items are ready, fine, go there. I will now take a copy of the order and go there. So here I will now go to window and then I go to the navigator now. And then here, what happens? You go to the uh, shipping and then go to the transaction form now. And then query. 
query for the order number and go that paste it over here now and then here make the line status as null now and then click on find now and then let me launch the pick release now find the control let me do it now fine so once when you launch the pick release what happens you go there and then with the, with the shift i have now go there and select all the lines and then i have now go put actions and then launch pick release now. <coughs> So let me launch the vehicle. Let's click on go now. Fine. The delivery also will be getting created automatically. The PSLG can currently be running now. Fine. Go there. So the PR and the PC process, the pick release as well as the pick confirmation process is always automatic in eBiz now. Whereas here in Fusion, we have the option of what? Picking, uh, releasing it separately and then automatically confirming it separately. Fine. That way is available. And then, I think in uh, eBiz also we can uh, separate pick confirm, right? Uh, like we only uh, will not allocate it. No, it's not possible. Separately, pick confirmation is not possible. Once when you do the what happens uh, thing, what happens? It will be allocations and transactions are implicit actually in EBS. We cannot separately do it. When you allocate it, what happens? It transacts also. It doesn't do. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, uh, but if I want allocate it, then I can go and allocate, and then I can perform transaction. No, no, no. You cannot perform that. If you allocate it, transaction is also automatically completed. <clears throat> Fine. We cannot do a separate transaction separately. Only for a replenishment move order, what happens? We can allocate it separately and then you can transact it separately. Whereas for a pick wave move order, what happens? Allocations and transactions are implicit now. You click on any other button, what happens? It will, both of them will be done together. And in the automatic route also, what happens? They are done automatically. In the manual route also, it's totally automatic. In the automatic route also, it's totally automatic as far as the business is concerned. Okay, if you want, I can show it to you. Fine, I already, okay, since you have asked for it, I'll not show it to you. Fine, go there. <coughs> Since you asked for it, what happens? I will not show it you how it's coming now. If I go there, I will not go to the sales order. I will pick it on most sales order for this now. <clears throat> 11 43 and then give a tab. Go to the lines. And then here, what happens? I will not put the item over here. P50 percentage. And then each percentage. And then give a tab. I will not go for sale order. Uh, two quantities and then give a commit. If I go there. And then let me book it now. <clears throat> so the order is booked now. If I go there. So here, what happens? You go there and then uh, take out the copy of the order now. If I go there. And then we will now modify the what happens your shipping parameters for a manual allocation. So I go there, go to the navigator now. So let me modify the shipping parameters now. Go to the shipping setup. Shipping parameters now. Shipping parameters. Let me make it manual now. And go there. So if you say do not auto auto allocate, what happens? It will be manual actually. It is now manual. Fine. Auto allocate is now removed now. And go there. Now what happens? We go there and then go to the shipping parameters now. And go there. Shipping transaction now. And go there. I will now go back one level now. And then let me query it now. So this one I'm going it now. Four to four is the one I'm going it. So here, what happens? Let me go on the release order. So once it is released, what happens? It'll be released to warehouse actually. Fine. Launch pick release will be releasing the warehouse because auto allocate is not on now. So it will be released to warehouse. So PSLG will be running and then it will be releasing the line to the warehouse actually. Fine. So it is ready to release. It will be released to warehouse. If you give a control one, what happens? It will be released to warehouse. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then in this place, what happens? You take a copy of the more order. The more order number I'm taking copy. Of. I go there. I'm taking copy of the more. We go there. Go to the navigator now. And then here we go there. Go to the what's called uh, inventory. And then go to the more orders. And then go to the more orders. Transact more orders. So more orders, transact more orders. The one I paste the line over there. And then click on find now. <coughs> now I select the line. Once when I select it. When I allocate it, the transaction is also taking place automatically as far as the pick wave move order is concerned. So there are three types of automatic move orders. One is a replenishment move orders from inventory. One is a pick wave move orders from order management. And then one is a material pick from manufacturing. Material pick from manufacturing. Fine. So for replenishments as well as material pick, what happens? Allocation can be done separately and transaction can be done separately. Whereas for a pick wave, we cannot do that at all. Fine. That's how it has been programmed actually. Whereas in fusion, what happens? The pick wave also can be done separately. Pick wave also can be done separately. Find that way they have directed the fusion message. Now let me click on allocate. If you allocate it, what happens? The PR and then the PC process will be done together. Pick release as well as the pick confirmation, both of them will be done together. Fine, click on allocate now. I'm going to allocate it as soon as I allocate again. Say so the material pick release and pick confirmation process complete with the PRs. Fine, there is no need to transact at all. Click on OK. Now what happens? The line will vanish. Fine, transaction is complete. What happens? The transact button is also gone. Tushar, is it clear now? And how it works. So if you go there, uh, but in WMS enabler, it does not happen. Huh? Oh, WMS WMS enabled, oh, oh. He's saying in a WMS enabled organization, it is separate, isn't it? That's what he's saying, isn't it? Yeah. 
oh ho pick release and pick confirmation are separate in wms enabled organization okay and i don't know wms and so what happens i'm unable to comment on this now thank you so tushar is saying that what happens on a wms enabled organization what happens the pick release as well as the pick confirmation are separate as but in a normal sales order it is not separate it's all there and then here we have a pick and ship that yeah yeah will be yeah another target move or target move or bottle itself will be disabled if you enable Uh-huh. The, transaction. the transaction itself is disabled huh? when you when you select it only allocation comes first and then afterwards after allocation the transaction button is coming isn't it yeah transaction button will not it not no it will not come oh, entirely it will right. not come in so good good thing fine we are learning something from tushar so tushar is already working on wms and so what he says is that what happens when you put a tick mark on the line on the uh, transact move order form only allocate button will be coming transact button will not be coming now here what happens both the buttons are coming You click on any of the buttons. What about the PR and the PC process are coming again together? Whereas in a WMS enabled organization, what he says is that what happens? You have to allocate first only. After you allocate, then only what happens? The transact button is coming, and then what happens? You have to do it. Right? Even it is for a pick query. That is what he is saying. By normally, what happens? Manual requisition move orders as well as for the other automatic move orders. It's like that. But in pick wave, it is not so. But here in WMS enabled organization, that's all totally manual. That's what he says. Good. <clears throat> So you go there and do it now. Find the order stage pick and from, and then we have a pick and ship available there. Fine. If you click on it, it will now do a pick and ship also totally automatically. Fine. This is an option. Whereas in Fusion, what happens if you put the shipping parameters over there now? If what happens if if on the shipping on the shipping parameters, what happens if you go and then put this one over here? Fine. You cannot split it at all. Fine. The shipping is totally automatic as far as Fusion is concerned. I go there and then here order comes. I will now enable the auto allocation. Fine, this is not tested. Now I can go there, commit, and then close it. Now we will go for the next activity. We will now go back one level and then we will now query the next order. Now fine, two three. <coughs> so two three is the order. What happens? I am doing it now. Go for two three. <coughs> I will now query for it. So we already done the picking. Now let me remove the deliveries for all the remaining lines. Now fine, go there. I will now do the shift. I will now go there. I will now unassign from the delivery. Fine. I will now have only the first line over there. Now fine, go there. I will now unassign it. Go there. Let me unassign it. And then let me unassign it. Now unassign from delivery and then give a go. So the deliveries will be gone. Fine. Go there. Only for the first line, the delivery will be there. The remaining lines, the delivery is not associated. So in the first line, what happens? I am now going to do the ship confirmation. Fine. Click on the delivery. So it comes to the next hand side. Here, what happens? I click on the ship confirmation. So the moment I click on the ship confirmation, my ship confirmation rule will be coming. I click on it. My ship confirmation rule will be coming. Fine. This rule is coming. And then he says. Set delivery in transit and then close trip is not there. What happens? The metal will just lifted and then kept on the what happens on the uh, vehicle. Now. now here we have a different interface. The different interface is now getting automatically on. So what exactly is interface? We will not see this. So if you see this now, fine. So once when the delivery is confirmed, what happens? We are now going to close the opening step, opening stop. We are going to do it with a different interface and do not different interface. So we are going to close the opening stop. What happens with the different interface? Now. The different interface is not done. So we are going to close the opening stop with the different interface. Fine, different interface not. So if it is different interface, what happens? The vehicle will now leave our place. It will be going to ship actually, and then we will now wait for the customer acceptance. We will now wait for the customer acceptance. So once the customer acceptance is now coming, fine. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll wait for the customer acceptance. So what happens? This process is somewhat manual. <clears throat> this process is somewhat manual. Now, fine, go there. Uh, here, what happens? The shipping manager will now wait for the carrier driver to what happens? Uh, confirm that what happens? It is now delivered. Afterwards, what happens? The shipping manager will now run the interface trip stop manual. So this program is known as a send shipment advice in EBS in the infusion actually. So you know, right? Then what happens? The uh, shipping interface, shipping will be inter program uh, progressing to interface, and then once when it is interfaced, the sales order will not progress to ship. And then afterwards, what happens? You will not run the workflow background again. Now, fine. You will not run the workflow background process, and then the line gets closed now. And then afterwards, what happens? The order invoice master will run. It will not spawn the order invoice import program. The commercial invoice is not getting created. Invoice will be processed, the taxes, advances, everything, adjustments, everything. And then the, the entire process is totally automatic. And then it will be invoice will be sent to the customers. The revenue recognition department is now called upon. And then they will now knock the customers go for payment. Actually, this is how what happens. It all done in a totally automatic fashion. That means what? 
if the ITS is not run, what happens? It will never progress at all. If the ITS runs, what happens? The RR will now contact the customer actually for payment. Actually. So the payment terms are like this. What happens as and when you deliver the material to the customer, then only what happens? Uh, you will be having to pay immediate payment. But let us say the vehicle has got punctured and then it is now lying on the road. Fine. You know, take another one day for uh, the things to be getting cleared now. But what happens if you run the interface? No, ITS is not deferred. Let us say it is not deferred. What happens? It will now go there. And then RR department in a few hours' time, it will now ask the customer for payment. Actually, then they will now realize that what happened. They will, then only they will now realize that the item itself has not reached. So many companies will now defer the interface. Actually, interface is now getting deferred. Actually, it is not deferred. It is now run manually. We will now wait for the vehicle to reach the customer, and then afterwards only the interface trip stop program will be run as such. This is, a, this is a practice of many companies now. Fine. Where in the FMCG company, what happens? They will not run it directly. They will not. They will not wait for this at all. Because what happens there? They are selling only a low value item, and so what happens? They will not wait for anybody's customers acceptance or anything like that. Sometimes what happens? You will be uh, sending it through Blue Dot or some other uh, external carriers. No, fine. So they don't wait for what happens? Uh, the customer receiving the material. Fine. They will not go and then run it immediately. If the interface is not uh, stopped, what happens? It will be uh, the ITS is not uh, is not deferred actually. So we will not see the differing now and go that. So it's not deferred. Fine, go that is not deferred. Different interfaces there. Fine, click on OK now. So now we are now lifting the material and then keeping it on the carrier only. Fine, click on OK. What happens? It's not safe. A lot of errors will be coming. Fine, there will be a warning message will be coming. Fine, uh, it is OK. Fine, there's no delivery is not confirmed. Fine, there's no confirmed other vehicle. Fine, click on OK. There's no confirmed. And then if you go to the stops, what happens? You can now see what happens. Both the stops are open. Now let me try to close the opening stop. Now fine, go there. Let me try to close the opening stop. The trip is also what happens is open. <laughs> the trip is also open, and then I go to the stops, and then here what happens? I will now close the opening stop. Action update status, and then click on go now. Fine, go there, and then I will now close the opening stop. So here also what happens? I can defer the interface now. Fine, I will now allow the defer the interface. Fine, close the opening stop. Click on it. Fine, I am now closing the thing. Fine, click on OK. So by which what happens? It will now work. Fine, it will now say one stop has been with, uh, closed with warnings. Fine, it doesn't matter. Fine. All the warnings are coming. Thank you. Okay. So it's now closed. And then if you go on and see this now, and then go there. Here, what happens? This is, will be shipped actually. Fine, control of flowman. What happens? It will be shipped actually. Item has been shipped. But what happens? It has never been interfaced to inventory at all. So the interface trip stop will be interfacing it to inventory, in which what happens? The sales order has to go to what? As a as a shipped actually. If you go on and have a look at the sales order, no point go there. If you go on and look at the sales order, go there. And then if you go on and query for it, fine, control of flowman, if you refresh it. What happens? You can now see the status will be picked only. Fine, it is not a ship. Actually, fine. Once when it is shipped, what happens? The inventory gets decremented and then the reservation gets relieved. Actually, but here, what happens? We are deferred it fine. in this place. What happens? We are not deferred it. And so, what happens? We will now wait for the what happens? The the, the it is no the trip is an in transit actually. It's an in transit. And then what happens? If you go on and see the stop is now closed. And then the delivery is what it is an in transit actually. Fine, control flow. And if you see what happens, no in transit. Delivery is in transit, whereas this is now only ship is now gone to ship actually. Right. The delivery is in, in transit actually. Fine, go there and then go to the path. And then let us say the the the, the customer he has now delivered it to the end, end client. Fine, go there and I will now close, close the, uh, the the final stop also. If I close the final stop, the delivery will be closed actually. Fine, the delivery will be closed. You go there and then we are going to close the final stop and then go there. Click on OK. Fine, what happens? Then? So I will again defer the interface. Because I am now what happens closing the stop, but I want a confirmation from the customer or from my carrier driver that what happens it is delivered actually. So in the system I'm making it. So I am again deferring the interface. Fine, click on okay now. Fine, what happens? No close. Now delivery will be closed actually. Delivery is closed, but line is simply shipped now. It is not an interface actually. It is not an interface. The trip. The what happens? The trip is also closed. Fine. As far as the movement of material is concerned, in the system what happens? Everything is completed. But what happens? We are ready to get a confirmation that what happens? The customer has received the material. Now, what happens? The customer is giving you a call, or otherwise, the driver is giving you a call that, sir, I have delivered the material. Now, we will now run the ITS manually. We are going to run the ITS manually and go there. So, let us now run the ITS manually and go there, go to this place. It is now picked up and then dropped off. And all the things are come, everything is now completed. So, what you will do is you will now go to the delivery and then take a copy of the delivery and then for which what happens is not on the ITS. So, if you go to the window and then go to the sales orders, still it is only picked now. Fine, control of will be picked only. Fine. Now, let us run it manually. So let us now go on and run it manually. <coughs> go there. So let us now run it manually. We will now run the concurrent ITS. Interface trip stop. I'm going to run. Interface trip stop. I'm running it. Interface trip stop is RS. I'm go there. And then it will be run for a delivery. It will be run for a delivery. Go there. Go. Then click on OK now. 
you know rank fine go there so ahora when no rank fine concept it no fine the best tips of as as no rank fine go there submit so once when this completed what happens you know see the ids is running so once when the ids gets completed what happens you know see that what happens this delivery will be interfaced and control of flow one if you see what happens it will be interfaced it has gone to the interface it has no fine go there and then here what happens you go there and do it now what is interface and then if you go on and see the sales order and go there sales order and then if you refresh it what happens it will be going to ship the status so it will be shipped so the sales order is now what happens the order uh, this what is called your shipping execution is now interfacing the line to the order entry and then what happens is not being shipped now what happens you have to run the what's called workflow background so once when you run the workflow background fine once when you run the workflow background my workflow background process we go there <clears throat> and then it will be for way model line now so the line type is OM order line. We go there and run it for the OM order line now. <clears throat> OM order line. And then here, whatever this has been deferred by the process actually. Fine, it is not timed out actually. And then click on OK and then submit it. So once when you submit it, what happens will be running. And then once when it runs, it will now be triggering the auto invoice. It will now close the line. The line gets closed. And then what happens? The auto invoice process will be triggered now. So what happens is not running. So once when it is completed. What happens? Auto invoice process will be running, and then the invoice will be in the base tables of AR actually. It will now go to the base tables of AR. And the ADS auto invoice master is running now. Fine, go there. So upon completion of this, what happens? Is not so once when it is run, what happens? You cannot see that the invoice available in the base tables of AR actually. The auto invoice master will now run the auto invoice import program actually. Once when this completed, what happens? It will be running there, the import program, and then once when that is completed, what happens? You now have this. And close. Go there and then control of flow. What happens? You cannot see that it will be closed. Actually. So it is the responsibility of the customer service representative (CSR) who is interacting with the customers to close every line. In fact, what happens uh, in many companies? What happens? Uh, you will not say how many lines are there. Let us say some 200 lines are there out of which what happens? 150 is closed. So the next day morning, what happens? They'll be discussing about how many lines are closed. Actually. So it is his responsibility to close all the lines basically. And then if it is not closed, he has to give an answer for this. Fine. Why there is some problem in the shipping or item is not available. We are not under manufacturing or we are under procurement. So he will not give explanation for all the unclosed lines. Actually. CSR is responsible for it. So once when the line is closed, what happens is activity is over. Fine. And then afterwards, once when the payment is realized and then once when the what happens, the revenue is recognized and then what happens, the receipts is applied and the revenue is recognized, what happens, the header also will be closed. Every time, what happens will be in a book status. So it will now wait for the AR to complete all the activities of revenue recognition. Afterwards, what happens? The sales order entirely gets closed. And then you will now take up a backup of the sales order, and then you will now purge all the sales orders. Actually. So that is how it works actually in this industry. Right. This is what is. So this portion, what happens? I have to check only with the uh, what happens, the EMIS uh, uh, Effusions order management action. Fine, go there. <clears throat> so I just want to show you this now. Fine, go there. Now let us go and then create our shipping rule now. Fine, ship confirmation rule in Fusion. Any doubts on this now? I just made multiple lines because what happens if uh, uh, if you want to make a change and then what happens again uh, even the most But what happens it's not very clear actually. Right? So in the first one line itself, what happens? I have completed everything on this on ship confirmation process. So ITS is a very major one, and that is known as what uh, uh, send shipment advice or something like that in Fusion actually. <laughs> You're going to see this. I know that. So you'll not see the ITS process actually. Now. For a transfer orders, what happens? I'm now going to make it totally automatic now. Fine, I'm going to do it here. Customer acceptance can be done in four many ways automatically. Fine, what is called one is an what's called a pre billing implicit and then pre billing explicit, and then one is a post billing implicit and then post billing explicit. Fine, there are four ways of automatic. What happens? The customer himself will be recording uh, the acceptance actually in the system as such. Now, fine, I don't know how much is uh, enabled in uh, Fusion actually. Fine, that also I have to check in Fusion actually once when it comes. So all these things will be checked for me, checked by me, and then I will be while I'm conducting the training. What happens? I want to have a clear idea about all these things. If anybody has got any good documentation on order management, fusion order management, please send it to me. What happens? I will now start to learn that. <clears throat> good then, fine. Go there. This is what is now. We'll now go there and then create the ship confirmation rule in fusion. Fine, go there. Let us now go and create the ship confirmation rule in fusion. Any doubts on this now? Now go and then create the ship confirmation. It's P fifty. Go there. And then here it's Oracle one two three. Hello, Parvinder. Have you joined? I don't think he has joined. Parvinder told me he's a 
student of mine over here now. They go there. <clears throat> Now, what happens? We go there and then we will now do the ship confirmation. Do the setup and maintenance and then do the ship confirmation. Fine, right, it is managed. I know that it is manager of your ship percentage. C O M F A R percentage. Right now. So, it's a managed ship confirmation tool. Fine, it does not go on the window. Door. So, click on plus and then it will be created. Now. So, I will now say P50. And then ship underscore confirm underscore the rule. I know that I will not put this one. I know that. Here, yeah, what happens? The create shipments for the what happens? The remaining staged quantities. This will be tested only with order management. Actually, fine. Create bill bill of lading and then packing slip is okay. Fine. Go there. Close the shipment. Fine. Go there. And then defer uh, sending inventory updates to integrated applications. So fine. So I am not going to do it because you have to run the concurrent manually. So I am not going to defer it actually. Fine. That will be tested along with the order management actually. Fine. Go there. And then override shipping method. Now what happens in EBS? It's not so. Shipping method is not mandatory here. Fine. If you go and then see this one here, what happens? The shipping method is not mandatory here. Go to the shipping and then go to the setups. And then here, what happens? The ship confirmation rule. What happens? The ship confirmation rule. Uh, here, shipping method is a mandatory one. In this place, what happens? You see, the shipping method is not mandatory. Fine. And then uh, this has got a greater implication only with Oracle Transportation Management. Whereas here, what happens? Uh, the shipping method has been made mandatory actually. Fine. If you don't put it, what happens? It will now give some problems basically. Fine. Go there. I will not put one P50. And then uh, what happens? We have created one. This is a mandatory one. And I don't know. It, it, it doesn't work in some places basically. That is why what happens? I always ask my students to put the shipping method now. You create your carriers and then you create your transit times also. Fine. The transit times is also important. If the transit times and carriers are not created, what happens? It will not transfer orders are not working actually. I don't know about the fusion order management. So, but what happens? The transfer orders fail if the shipping method is not there in your ship confirmation basically. This is a very important one. Uh, then click on save and close. <clears throat> Click on save and close by which what happens? Our ship confirmation rule is ready. I go there. The fourth one is not done. No, I click on done. Come out of it. Now, finally, what happens? The final activity has to be done. So, we have to do the final activity of what? Shipping parameters. So, here, if the shipping parameters are not set properly, even order entry will not work at all in EBIS. And I don't know how they have defined it in a Fusion. Actually, fine. I have to set up. will now go and define the shipping parameters. So, what happens? I will now say percentage. Ship percentage. Parameters, the shipping parameters. Go there. Manage shipping parameters. Go, on. go there. And then we create a new one. Organization is what? So shipping parameters are org specific. And so what happens? You're doing now. Fine. There's a P51. The one. I go there and then give it for the first org. I'm going to define it. So if you go and then make a comparison with EBS, now fine. Go there. You'll now have a comparison with EBS. Fine. Close. <clears throat> I go there. You'll now have a comparison. Fine. Shipping setup. Shipping parameters. Shipping setup. Shipping parameters. In the shipping parameters, first area, what happens? All these things are mandatory. So the weight and volume are mandatory. It is only for oracle transportation management. Here also they have made it as mandatory. What happens? If you don't give the weight and volume class, what happens? It will not work. I will not show it to you. Let me put my ship confirmation rule over here. Now find P50 and then give a tab. Now. If you don't put the weight and volume, what happens? You cannot save it all. And then shipping set behavior. Here, what happens? The ship set, arrival set, and fulfillment set is not a mandatory one as far as EVS is concerned. Here they have made it as mandatory. If you don't put it also, then also it will not work as well. Ship set behavior, what happens whether it's going to end in error or a warning or a zinc. Fine. So this is going to be what happens. We have to see this now. Fine. Here, if you don't leave it blank, it will not work at all. Fine. Go there. So here the release sequence rule, I'm going to put it now. Fine, go there. I will not put my P50 release rule. Fine. Release a sequence rule. Here, pick slip grouping rule, what happens? I will not put the PSGR over here. Fine. There are mandatory fields, fine. Go there. Here also, what happens? They are all mandatory. Fine, go there. Go there please. What happens? The RSR and PSGR are mandatory fields. And then here, what happens if we go there and then see this now fine? We have to have a staging subunitary which you are not created. Let us not go on and get a staging subunitary for this now fine. Go there. Let us not get a staging subunitary. <coughs> you go there. Go to that. Manage this thing. Fine. Go there. Set up and maintenance. <coughs> manage subunitaries and locators now. Go there. It's manage percentage sub percentage loca. <coughs> go there. And then for the first org, we have to get a staging subunitary. So I have to work on the P501 only fine. Let me get a staging subunit. Click on plus now. Fine. So we'll not click on plus now. <coughs> and then let me get a staging subunit. A simple staging subunit. Fine. Go there. 
stage. <coughs> so I'm going to take trouble, you know, go there, click on it. And then always have the habit of putting the location over there, not fine. But some process fails, basically. And I don't know why they have made all these things, not fine, go there. Go order, fine, click on set location. The staging sub inventory is no main, not fine, go there, and all that. On the uh, source organization, the source organization must have the staging sub inventory over here, not fine, go there. And then click on it, and then here, what happens, I'll not put the staging sub inventory, not fine. STA, when you have the staging sub inventory is not here. So it's not that fine, go there. And then look at it is not there, fine. The number of apicrily is the child process is fine. This is for multiple processes, almost like A is not fine. How many child processes you can make it, not fine, go there. And then shipping grouping attributes, no fine. This is equivalent to release management in EBS, no fine, go there. If you go to the delivery, what happens? We can own group by customers, right? So we have a module called release management in EBS, no fine. That will be using this now. So here also, I don't know how it is all done, no fine. How you're going to group them, no fine. Grouping, how you're going to do it. So that I have to see in Fusion. So if anybody has got any fusion order management documentation for learning, what happens, uh, please forward it to me so that what happens, I will now be able to learn everything and then I'll now show you all these things. And then everything is not done fine. Here what happens, I'm not given the weight and volume as well as what happens, your ship set behavior also is not done fine. If you give a save, what happens, it will not give multiple errors. Actually. If you give a save, what happens, it will give plenty of errors. Fine, weight is not there, volume is not there. Ship set breaking option, fine, there's no saying this. Fine, this is not a mandatory field as far as the EVS is concerned. No. Fine, go there. Here. What happens? This is what happens. Here we have one ship model complete now. Fine, go there. If you go to the picker list, what happens? We have a enforced ship set and then ship models. If you want it, you can enforce it. Otherwise, what happens? You can leave it as such. No, fine. Here it is not so. Here it is a mandatory field as such. Fine. Here what happens? This is one. So uh, weight and volume, all these things are coming. Fine. Let us now go on and fill up all this. Weight is what you drop it off. And then here uh, we will be coming to the units of measures a bit later now. Fine. Go there. Then I will not say this. Fine. They have what one LT weight. I'm choosing this now. Fine. Go there. And then the volume. What happens? I will not choose one uh, uh, volume here. Now. This is for the, the thing, fine. And then you are given these two things. And then if you give a save, uh, this is again ship set will be a record. Fine. Click on save now. Fine. Go there. Now save. What happens? It now say this breaking option is must. You'll now give it as a what? None now. Ship set behavior. What happens? You now say error or warning. I'm not give a warning. Then only what happens? You can now give a save. <coughs> so some changes when compared to EB is now fine. There is no save actually. And that's it. My shipping parameters are ready actually. Fine. My staging subunit is also ready. Now, everything is now fully set for a transfer order, actually. Fine. For a transfer order, what happens? We are now set up everything fully. Fine. Go there. If you go on and see this, not fine. It's all fully set. For the transfer orders, what happens? We are now set up everything. So the release sequence rule is now set. The pick slip grouping rule is now set. Fine. The ship confirmation rule is set. The release rule is now set. Shipping parameter. All the five are now set. So if you don't do all the five, what happens? We will not be able to perform a transfer order. Got it? Any doubts on this now? Fine. Transfer order setups now. Now, let us go on then create a min-max planning with the organization sourcing. Now, fine. You already assigned the item to both the organization. When the transfer test item is assigned, item is already costed. And then what happens? Uh, the sub-inventory is now having locations basically. Fine. The carrier and transit times are defined. And the intro parameters have been. Uh, we are now, we had to change the intro parameters. Now, fine. We had to change the intro parameters for the transfer order enabled. Fine. That I have to do it now. Fine. And then preferably with the distance now basically. Fine. There is a, another thing. Fine. Not that everything is failing, but uh, what happens? The IRTO process, which is there in release 13, what happens? It needs the distance to be split. So have the habit of giving a distance also when you are preferring the intro parameters. No, fine, go there. So we'll now give the intro parameters again. No, fine, go there and do it. No, fine, go there. No, that. And then click on save and close and then come out of it. No, fine. All the five uh, prerequisites are now set. No, fine, go there. We'll now specify the intro parameters. Intro percentage, R percentage, para percentage. And then fine, go there. Intro parameters. Intro organization parameter. Go there. And then manage intro organization parameters. In this place, what happens? You go there. And then we'll now query from the organizations what P501. And then give a tab and then click on search now. It will show you this one. And then PC of 501 to 502, fine. Go there, click on edit now. I'm not going to make it as what? As the transfer order. I will not put the tick mark on this one. I will not put the tick mark on this one. And then I already given the distance over here. This is required only for projects actually. This is required for at a is only for the projects actually. That's it. Fine. Go there. The transfer order is required. It is equivalent to IRISO of EBIS basically. Fine. Go there. It's the in transit and then what happens? Sir? Uh, the destination transfer type is in transit, and then what happens? Uh, it has to be in transit. Don't make it as direct. And the result loading is standard. Okay, okay no, fine. Result. No, no, no. The intro transfer orders is not. It is not transfer orders required for movement mode of the medical plane. Click on save and close. It is not done. Click on done. So we have completed everything, and now what happens? We will now uh, go to this place and then have a look at the stock. Now. Go there. We'll now have a look at the stock, and then accordingly we will now write. Fine, go there. So I will now go to the warehouse operation, then go to the inventory now. Inventory and then have a look at the stock now. How much of stock is there of the transfer test item? Remember, we created it in the beginning now because it has been costed. 
if item is not costed also it's not working right? there are also so many problems with between pvt underscore for amazon tra and then what happened so pvt transfer this item and go there and then on the pc501 you know how a little bit the stock so we have a stock of 98 actually and go there you will not see on the sub inventory and go there click on it expand it and then what happens in the sub inventory one uh, we have a stock of 98 actually so we will not set up the min max parameters accordingly so then we have a 98 stock and go there we will not set up the min max parameters accordingly <coughs> So this is not done. If I go there, we will not go to what the min max. If I go there, we will not click on this one. We will not go to this thing. Ninety eight is the stock we are having for this transfer this item. If I go there, what is the item? Meter is the min max. So here, what happens? We go there, <coughs> and then we will not go to what manage Fine. sub <coughs> sub sub and then locator. No, manage sub inventory and locators. No. Manage, oh, manage sub inventory and locators. Sub locator. No. <clears throat> so manage sub inventory and locators. We go there. And then we will not change it to the destination or. Fine. We are not going to set up on the destination or. Fine. Go there. Oh God. I have to see the stock in the destination. I have made a mistake. No. Fine. I have to see the stock in the destination. We go there. And then I will know how to look. I will know how to look at the stock in the destination. Because there only what happens. We are going to run the min max actually. Fine. We are going to run the min max actually. So we will now have a look at the stock in the destination of <clears throat> because min max should not have anything. I think there should not be anything, but anyhow, what happens? We'll not want to make it check out. We'll now have a look at the stock in the destination actually. <clears throat> so we'll not change the organization to P502 because from there only we are going to run it now. Fine, 502. And then click on OK now. Fine, we are running it. Click on OK. And then this is what is fine over there. And then I put the item over here now. It's P50 underscore tra and only tab. <clears throat> click on search now, it should not give any item at all. So, okay, there is no item at all. Fine. In the stores, we have 98, and then the destination, we don't have anything. Fine, no, no, no matter. Now, here, what happens? We can go there, and then we will not plan it. On the sub one, let us not take what happens. We will not, go, we will not change the organization, and then what happens? We will not change the organization to P502. <clears throat> 502. Click on OK now. In sub one, we have stock. Here, what happens? I will not take up SFSI itself. In the SFSI, I will not plan it first. Fine, go there and then click on the manage items of inventories. Click on manage items of inventories. And then uh, we have for the min max, let me remove it now. Fine, go there. Distribute it out. Remove it now. Uh, okay, fine. Some some blah blah is not coming. Fine. Uh, this action uh, deletes the items of inventory relationship of the same time. Or the online points that you want to come in. Okay. In reality, what happens? Don't do all these things now because what happens? I you know, have plenty of outputs actually. Fine. That's why what happens? I'm doing it now. Fine. Only for a test purposes, what happens? I'm doing it now. Fine. Do not delete the items of the relationships basically. Fine. There's not a character. Click on plus now. Let us not define the new item relationship for this transfer test now. Fine. The P50 underscore tra. And then do it. It is only for test purposes we are doing like this. In the reality, what happens? I'm not doing it. Enable for min max now. Fine. Go there. I will not put what 10 and then 50. And then here, what happens? Go there. Uh, uh, fixed on one plus five now, then go there. Here, what happens? Now make it is what five and then forty. So, what happens? It will be giving you two outputs of what forty and uh, ten actually, and go there. And then make the type as what the sub inventory was uh, tough. We have completed it, and then supplier was very tough. We have completed it. Now we go for the org, which is very, very tough. And go there. To the org, which what happens? The transfer orders will be created, which is the source organization we had mentioned. It find go there. Fifty now, this becomes a mandatory find give a tab now. So, we have to mention the organization. As what P50 and then entry now. So this is a sole organization. Okay, click on OK and then choose it. And that's it. Sub inventory is not required because whatever the moment request will automatically allocate the sub inventory. And then we have material only on sub one actually. Fine. The P50 uh, sub one only we have material and leave it as a chop and it will be allocated. So now once when I run a min max, what happens? It will be creating a transfer order for me now. Is it clear now? Anybody has got any doubt on this now? And it will be moving from 501 now. The source. I am now doing it on the destination sub inventory. Destination all, and then I am doing it. So I am now giving this parameters. So it has to give, since we don't have any stock, what happens? It has to give you two outputs, two truck load of what and 10 actually has to be moved over here now. Fine, go there. Click on save and close now. Fine, go there. Save and close. Now let me run the min max. Fine, go there. So let me run the min max. Fine, go there. Click on done now. And then now run the min max. <clears throat> go there. Click on run min max. So go there, go to the more, and then here what I'm going to go to the schedule process, and then let us run the min max. We are going to run the min max program now. Go 
So schedule new process now and go there and then make them. It's what print min max. Print min and then give a tab. And then click on OK now. <clears throat> so remember min max can be done at the sub inventor level as well as org level. Org level is a lab access for you. If I go there, I'm not putting it down. It's what P502 is the org. I go there. Give a tab. And then I'm going to sort it the inventory item and go there. And then here, what happens? The planning level is sub inventory. We can even do it at org level also. And then I will choose the SFSA sub inventory for this now. Fine. Shop flow sub inventory, I'm going to choose it now. Fine. The shop flow sub inventory, I'm choosing it. So this is what as we go. Then further, what happens? This thing, please tell me about how to automate it now. Fine. My student is saying that what happens? Everything is coming automatically over here now. Fine. But I am now populating it manually. Every time I'm running, populating it manually. And go there. And then here, what happens? I'm going to give a demand cut update, supply cut update, and go there. Restock is yes, it will be giving an automatic output of transfer orders. No, fine, go there. It will be putting a transfer orders. Fine, go there. And then I'm not switching off any of the things. Everything is on because we don't have any stock as such. No, we don't have any purchase order. If purchase orders for the stock is there. I'm not sure about it. I include PO supply. Let me make this go now. I'm not, I'm not sure about whether any purchase orders have been created for this transfer orders. Only min max I have created. Anyway, I'm now making it as no as such. No, fine. So nothing will be in the interface tables, basically fine. If you feel that something is going to be there in the interface tables, what happens? Incl include the uh, interface supply also, we'll now make it as no now. Uh, I don't think so anyhow, what happens? Include interface supply because I don't want to fail on the move order and uh, the, uh, the min max output. So those things are made, those supplies have been made as no now. Fine, go there. So it's all done now, fine. Go then submit this concurrent. Click on submit, by which what happens? The min max is now done. So let us go and then have a look at it now, fine. 824 is now running. So once when it is completed, what happens? Now have a look at it now. It will now show me the outputs now. <clears throat> no running. It is not succeeded yet. You go there and then here it will run and see this now. So click on republish of this now and click on republish. And then have a look at it now and go there. Click on it. And then go to export as a PDF now. So we are now exporting it as a PDF and click on OK now. Now coming. And then have a look at it whether the output is not coming or not. And go there. Have a look at it. Open it up and have a look at it. And then what happens? Uh, since the previous systems are having a problem with the batch name on the SEO process, now fine. Let me take a copy of it. In some in other cases, what happens if you are finding SEO is not running properly? What happens? You put the batch number over here now and go there. And go there. We have an output of 50 now, so it will be 40 plus 10 actually. So 40 plus 10. So supply is zero, demand is zero, and then available quantity is zero. So the minimum is 5 and 40. Fine. Well, which what happens? It's now giving output of 40. Fine. Two truck loads of 40 and 10 has to be moved from the first door to second door. That is what it's saying now. Fine. Go there. We will not run the SEO now. Fine. Go there. So the supply chain orchestration will be done now. Fine. Go there. Close it now. Click on schedule new process and then let us know on the supply. Fine. Process supply. So process is CO is a concurrent which I'm going to run it now. Fine. This is now going to take care of what happens. So moving it into yeah, as a transfer order for the source organization. Fine. Click on okay. And then what happens? There are uh, this has been modified in uh, fusion now. Fine. What happens? These are the demanding systems basically. The planning central may demand. The self service procurement may demand. The fusion order management or inventory. Fine. One of the four demanding systems are there. No, fine. You have to choose which is not demanding. I think if you leave it blank, also it has to work. Fine. I'm not sure about it. Fine. Or some of you make a check of it. No, fine. It has to do for all. Actually, if you leave it blank, fine. Go there. And then from supply request number, what happens? I'm facing it. No, fine. If you are facing a problem, then what happens? The request number is required. Fine. Otherwise, it's not required. As such, no, fine. Go there. And then what happens? Submit it. So click on submit. By which what happens? This process will be done. So click on OK. And then here what happens? You can now see this. Now. So if this is now successful, then only what happens, it will now say it has picked up that amendment request. Now. It has now they have taken the request only for this now, only when it is successful. So only when that is successful, what happens, it will now show you. It has now picked it up, picked it up. Find if the, uh, what happens, the min max planning is not giving any output at all, any restockable output, then what happens, it will not pick it up. Even if you are given the number, what happens, it will not pick up and go there. And then how look at it now and go there. Click on it. <coughs> and then here, what happens, we go there. And then have a look at the parameters. Click on this output. Yes, is output now. Enterprise scheduler service job. That is what it says. Now. Fine, go there. Click on it now. Fine. Let me have it. Open it up. And have a look at the log. So take a copy of the log. 
control E and then control C, and then put in the word file and then see this now. Open up a word file and then have a look at it. <clears throat> Paste it over here now. Here, what happens? It says job status is success now. Fine, you'll now see whether it has picked up or min max or not. Fine, page up on the page up on the here. What happens? You'll now see whether it has picked up. Yes. What happens? List of interface batch numbers processes. This one. If the min max is not giving any output, what happens? It will now say nothing. Nothing is processed. That's what's going on. Nothing is processed. So since min max restocking is will yes, what happens? It is not processed. It. So by which what happens? It will create a transfer order. Now. Fine, close it. Close it now. Close this one. Fine, close it. Just cancel it. Close it now. <clears throat> Don't save. Close it. Close it now. Now, what happens? You go there and then have a look at it. Now, we are going to see, click on the home icon and then you go to the SCO now, straight away. You go to the supply chain orchestration, find supply orchestration. So, we have a financial orchestration there and you're moving it across LE now. Across LE is what happens. The source organization, destination organization, the intercompany payables and receivables account as we said, oh, you know, that as well. So, click on the supply orchestration and then go inside now. You know, have a look at it. Opening it up, we'll now open up the supply chain orchestration now, and then we'll now land up on the overview page. Actually, the overview page itself, what happens if there is any error? What happens? It will not show you the errors. Actually, fine, go there. So, we don't have any P50 errors. Actually, fine, this mission there is no error. Fine, here, what happens? You click on it, click on the task carousel on the right hand side, and then here, what happens? You go there and then go to the manage supply lines now, and then query on your request number. So, here, supply request number is what you go there and then query for it. Paste it over here. Oh God. Gee, gee, gee. I've taken up some other copy now. I'm clear it now. Uh, no, reset it actually. <clears throat> go there. And then uh, what is the number here? I forgot. And then go there. And then go there. And then, uh, well, no. See this now. Go there. And then take it up. You click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the more. And then go to the schedule process. And then have a look at the number. You go to the schedule process, what happens? You can see the number now. <clears throat> so the number is what? The min max, number fine. Min max and then 1068874. The and then we will go to the next one. Go there. And then uh, we'll go to the next one. Go there. And then uh, we'll go to the And then minus supply is min max. <clears throat> and then uh, what is the number? It is uh, 1068874. So 1068874. And then click on search. You know, search for it. Right? We've got two lines of 40 and transfer. Right? It is not suggesting a transfer actually. It's not suggesting a transfer actually. Right? The process is now complete. So it has now pushed into the source organization for doing it. So the SCO is now successful here. Now I can go there. It has now created a transfer order also. So if you go on then click on the supply orchestration number now, fine. Supply chain orchestration number. We have got two lines. It is now the suggestion is a transfer. Fine. We have recently seen the previous one was a buy actually. When it was supplier, what happens? It was a buy. Now, since it is an organization one, it is a transformation. And then what happens? There is no errors at all. And so what happens? The errors will be shown on the left hand side. Now, right? The left hand side, the error will be shown. And then there is no error. It's not complete. Fine. The SEO process is not complete. Fine. Go there. We have to note down the transfer order. Now. Fine. Go there. And then we will not click on the supply orchestration number. What happens? We opened up. And then I'm opening it up. Fine. I'm not showing a transfer. So the waters go there. And then the bottom, what happens? It will not show you. Fine. There are three recommendations given to the SEO over the buy or a make or a transfer. I will not select this line now. Fine, go there. The what is complete now. Fine, go there. And then click on that. What happens? It, buy, it won't be there. And then the make also, it won't be there. Fine, go there. Nothing will be there. And then the transfer is there. Click on the transfer. What happens? You go there. And search. So this is the order number which it has no shown. Fine, go there. So 105002 is the transfer order number. Fine, it is now created. And if you click on this 105002, what happens? It will not show you this. 105002, what happens? It will not show you the transfer order number. What happens? It will not show you 40 and 10. Fine, go there. Yes. <clears throat> Fine. It is not what happens. Interface it is what interface to shipping actually. Fine. It is not interface to shipping. Now we have to do what? We have to create the pick wave and then what happens? We have to confirm the pick wave and then we have to ship it. And remember, if it is coming from order management, the pick wave is automatically created. But for a transfer order, what happens? The, the pick wave movement request has to be manually created. Fine. We have to manually create it. If it is coming from order management, order management will now create the pick wave movement request and then what happens? We only have to what to do the remaining steps. Now, what happens? Even the pick wave movement request has to be created manually here. So this is the one. So the number is 105200002 is the transfer order number. Or the transfer order number. So the SCO process is now complete. Any doubts on this now? Click on that and then come on up. So the supply orchestration number is not showing you this now. And expand it. And the second state, what happens? It must say. Oh, it doesn't matter. 
the line of closing is complete. So SCO is not done. Fine. Now I'll now go on then see the 105002 transfer order. I click on that. So that's it. Fine. SCO is now complete without any errors. Actually. And remember, I had plenty of errors when my student was going. Fine. And we corrected everything. Fine. Here, what happens? I made some multiple mistakes. And then I corrected everything. And then what happens? I resubmitted them. What happens? Then only what happens? It get solved actually. It took around more than two hours for me to what happens? Uh, analyze it now. Fine. It's uh, somewhat sensitive. So what happens if you don't do it properly? What happens? You will be getting stuck on this transfer orders. Fine. Many companies are going for transfer orders. So what happens? It must be proper, very, very properly. Fine. Please, uh, many people are now using my login for testing it. Fine. Please use your own structure creation and then do the test. Then what happens? You will be able to have a look and feel of what you are doing now. And in the client's location, will know. Hey, are Jaki taking it? Fine. Is me kya bada badi cheez to nahi hai. Fine. Uh, when you're testing it on my thing, I've already tested, I've already created everything. And then uh, only some few things are only tested now. Fine. Please create your complete interface structure and the test it. Then only whatever you'll have a look and feel of the entire thing. Fine. Even if you make a small mistake, we'll understand it. Fine. Is that learning area and so what happens? I try to utilize it to the best possible extent of the, uh, what happens? I create everything. Do not be lazy on this now. And then do not use mine for each and every testing. For a serial control, lot control is okay. Fine. For some other controls and other things is okay. But for this transfer orders, please make your own. Then only what happens, you'll be able to, you have to, you'll see whether you are succeeding or not. Now, let us go there, go to the inventory and then have a look at it. Now. And go there, go to the place. And then here, what happens, go to the warehouse operation, then go to the inventory. And then let us now go to the source organization. <coughs> let us now change the source organization. The transfer order is now created. Fine, change the organization to the source now. So it's a P501 and then give it a tab and then click on OK now. Click on OK. So it's now done. Fine, here what happens, we'll now go and then what happens, click on the transfer orders. Now. Go there. So click on manage transfer orders. For a manage movement request, if you go there, what happens? You can now very well create a movement request also from here. There's a plus icon there. Fine. Now, what happens in restore? What happens if we cannot create a transfer order? Also. And transfer orders can only really be managed basically. Manage transfer orders, you don't have a plus button at all. Fine. We can only manage it. The plus button is not there. There is no plus button at all. And in actions also, what happens? You don't have a plus button. So we can only manage it now. Fine. The transfer order number is what? 105. What is the number here? One zero five something. Anybody remembering it now? Fine. One zero zero, zero two. Oh, who is this? Are you? Are you? Is now very, very correct now? Fine. So he is remembering the numbers beautifully. Good. I'll go there together. Answer all. If you are not remembering the number, what happens? You can even query the other way. Fine. Go there. So I go there. Close it. And then what happens? You can now query on the item also. Fine. Go there. If you don't remember the number, what happens? You can even query on the item. Fine. Go there. Item is P fifty <coughs> underscore. What happens? You can even query on the some tra and then give a tap. You can even query on the item. And there are so many ways of querying it actually. Fine. P would be let's go tra. Ah, come on, boy, it's not coming. Why is my item is not coming here? Any mistake I'm making it not come here. Otherwise, what happens if you don't do it? What happens? You can now see the destination or source. One of them I can put it now. Fine. Destination organization is P502. Fine. Go there. <sighs> If I do not make a search of it now. Okay, at least on this is not coming. But what happens item wise, we are unable to query. I don't know why it's so okay. If you know the transfer order number is okay, fine. Go there. Now what happens? We will now view the shipments and then the receipts. Now. Fine. Go there, select the line and then click on the view shipments and receipts. We're going to view. Fine. Click on view so it is. What happens? We're going to view. Go there. Now what happens? 40, the first line 40 is requested, 10 is the second is requested. Nothing is shipped, nothing is received, nothing is delivered. Fine. Go there. The shipment is also not created. It's okay, fine, go there. So now we are now going to do the pick wave creation. Fine, click on them. We are now going to do the pick wave creation. So this is the transfer orders ready now actually for transferring. So the SCO has successfully pushed. Fine. So there is no problem in SCO. Fine. Uh, and my student was having a problem in SCO itself, but has got stuck in the SCO itself. Because some setups are not done properly. If you are not done some setups, what happens? It will be getting stuck in the SCO itself. Fine. So please check whether you are succeeding or not in every stage of this. Now we will now go on and create what's called a pick wave. Now. I click on go to the warehouse operations and then here what happens? We go to the inventory now and go there. So here what happens? We are now seen many, many tabs like what happens? The pick slips have been seen now. Inventory has been seen now. Fine, go there. Now we are going to see pick waves as well as shipments. Now. The receipts is also seen. We'll now see the pick waves and shipments and afterwards we'll now go to the counts also. So we have seen the pick slips. The pick slips have been seen by the movement request. Once when the movement request is released, what happens? The pick slips are released. Now we are going to get a pick wave now. So the pick wave. Remember, if it is coming from your fusion order management, the pick wave will be automatic now. 
Here, what happens? We are now manually creating it for transfer order. Can check on the paper. It has not created the transfer. Order. So here, as of now, nothing is there. Fine, go there. And then uh, there is no information at all on the big waves. Actually, fine, go there. It will not create a big wave. Click on what? Create a big wave. Create big wave. You are going to get a big wave. <coughs> so here, what happens? You go there. And then we can even populate a release rule over here. The release rule population will be more appropriate only for an order management activity and not for a transfer order activity. And go there. So for a transfer order activity, what happens is not more appropriate. Fine, go there. Click on the show more now. Fine, click on the show more. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then the ship form organizations by one. Fine, go there. Sub inventory, we can leave it because the movement tracks will not pick up the sub inventory automatically based upon the default FIFO on. Order type is what? You drop down and then what happens? Make this a transfer order. Make this a transfer order. And then order number, what happens? We're going to be 105. And then if you give a tap, what happens? It has to pick up the remaining numbers. Not fine, go there. There is a legal purpose. The customer is this. What is it? I'm saying this is not. That ship set, what happens? This is uh, year one which is required only for what happens your order management. Fine, when I learn order management, I will not tell you about the ship set. Fine, go there. And then here, what happens from scheduled ship date to scheduled ship date? What happens? I will not remove this. Fine, go there. So, this is uh, on the RSO part. Fine, if you go on and see on the RSO, no, fine, go there. Uh, release sales orders. If you go on and have a look at it, it's almost similar now. Fine, go there. We can now have a look at it and have the similarity on this. Here, <coughs> yeah. shipping RSO, RSO. This is order releases. So once when you go it, what happens? The two date is always today's date now. Fine, go there. And then these are all the filtering criteria actually. Fine. Here we don't have any big filtering criteria. We have already what happens? Uh, chosen the transfer order over here now. Fine, go there. And then I will not remove this also. I will not remove the dates. So that what happens? It will definitely pick the one zero five zero zero two has to be picked. And so what happens? I don't want to give any additional restriction on this now. Fine, go there. And then the what happens? The ship to location. Fine, not required as such. Now fine, go there. Go down. And then here shipping method. Fine, shipping method is an important one as far as. Yeah, it's thing is concerned. Fine, fusion is concerned. Fine, put this. And then the shipping priority is okay. Fine, drop down. And then click on the ship fund. Fine, go there. Leave the ship fund as a no fresh fund is not done. And then the, the, these things are all okay. Fine, we can now leave it as a no fresh fund. Fine, here shipping method is very important. Fine, and then go to the options area. Fine, click on the options area. So click on the options area. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then we are now giving it the state sub is not coming. Fine, they're all getting populated from the shipping parameters actually. Fine, go there. It's not coming up. The RSR and PSGR are coming from the shipping parameters automatically here. No wonder. Auto confirm picks is an option available here now. So if you don't put the auto confirmation, what happens? You can even pick it manually. Fine, there is a lab exercise for you. And then here, if you put the ship confirmation rule, what happens? The pick and ship are totally automatic, actually. Here, pick and ship are totally automatic. And so what happens? I will not do this shipping manually, actually. Here, we cannot stop it at all. Even in the EBIS, what happens? If you go there and see, it's not fine. Uh, there, uh, it, it is not automatic, actually. In the shipping parameters, if you go and see, it's not automatic. So here, what happens if you put the ship confirmation rule? It is becoming automatic now. Fine, let me remove it and then let us know. Do the manual shipping on this. And then create shipments. It's not going to get the shipment. Auto automatically back away. So auto confirm pick is an additional option when compared to EBIS. Basically, in EBIS, what happens? Uh, picking and then confirming is totally automatic. Whereas uh, Tushar is saying that what happens in WMS enabled organization, it is manual actually. We can only allocate first and then I can transact it. Fine, here what about the location and transact? So, implicit now, fine, go there. Load up. So, this much is sufficient now, fine. If I missed anything, just see me, fine, go there. So, in the options area, we are now given this now, fine. The PSGR, RSR, and PSGR are there, fine, go there. And then the main one, what happens there? We are now given the demand source as what? As a transfer order. <coughs> so, let me now release it now, fine. We will now do the release now, fine. So, releasing and then confirming are totally automatic, actually. Fine, go there. Let us now release it. Go there and do it. No, fine. Any other mistakes? Nothing. No, fine. Go there. So the shipment method is also given clearly. Fine. Go there. Click on release. So once when you release it, what happens? The pick slips will be created and then it will be confirmed also. <coughs> but it will be creating the pick slip. So pick wave is now completed. Fine. Go there. Was released. The number of pick slip is one and then the number of packs is not two. Fine. 40 and 10. Fine. What else? So 57029 is a pick wave actually. Fine. The pick wave is 57029. But I am unable to see the pick wave in my movement request at all. Fine, that is not visible at all. I don't know why it's so. That is not visible. Whereas in EBIS, we can very well see the move orders actually. Not now, what happens is not completed. Fine, go there. And then we'll now go to the shipment separately. Fine. In the meantime, what happens? We'll now go on and have a look at this one. Fine, go there. We will now have a look at the my transfer orders. Now fine, go there. We'll now have a look at the transfer orders. Fine, go there. You go to the managed transfer orders. Let me requery it now. Fine, go there. Let me requery it. So click on search now. Now, what happens? You go there and then we can now view the shipments. Now, fine, go there. Select it and then click on the view shipments and reserves. You select it and then click on the view shipments and reserves. Now, what happens? You can now see more reserves. Previously, nothing was there. Now, fine. The requested quantity is now there. What happens? It has now picked and then confirmed and then the system has now created a shipment number also. The shipment number is also created. 
but it is not a chip but what happens the pick wave move order is now created and then confirmed also fine because of automatic confirmation but you can even make it manual confirmation fine go there now if any of the setups is wrong upon shipping what happens the expected result data has to come if this is not coming what happens the transfer orders will fail actually the expected result data has to come fine now 5004 is a is a shipment number is now in open status fine go there is all us now it is not a chip it is not a received with the destination organization also fine go there so it's not showing fine at least what happens the shipment number is now created because what happens the pick uh, release as well as pick confirmation is now complete now we'll go there go to the main area here now fine go there we'll now go to the shipments so the pick wave is now created and then confirmed actually fine click on the shipments and then the shipments what happens you can now see one shipment is being released you can see one shipment is now ready ready to ship there in the bottom what happens you can now see the status as you know why it is now staged two lines are staged fine 100% is now staged and there are two lines are staged if you are doing it manually what happens it will be released ready to release and then released to warehouse and then staged fine it, it has to be tested by our order management actually and then the back ordering is also and nothing is shipped as such now fine so two lines are now ready for shipping actually so it is also showing over there now fine go there so if you click on this line what happens it will automatically open fine click on the ready to ship line what happens the 5004 line will be open for what happens shipping actually it will be opening for shipping actually so this is a ship confirmation process this was fine the 5004 is now coming fine go there so we can even query via other way fine go that clear cancel now so let us now query other way fine go there so let us now query on the spank click on the task carousel and then here what happens you go there and then click on the manage shipments now fine for the manage shipment lines go to the manage shipment lines and then query now so click on the manage shipment lines and then here what happens we can even uh, try to query on what here the order number is what your transfer order number now fine the customer ship location if you don't know all these things how to do it actually if you give a search now fine fine search Is not giving an option. Such is giving actually. Fine, go there. But uh, what happens? Uh, the order number is one zero five zero zero two. Fine. That the transfer order number. Fine. Something you must be knowing now. Fine. The blank search is also giving. Doesn't matter. The blank search is also. Giving. The blank search is also. Giving. Fine, it's not giving. Fine. Go there. So the order number. Now, fine. Go there. I will know what happens. Ship to quantity is now there. Fine. Go there. Let us now query on this. Now, fine. Go there. I have to open the shipment actually. Fine. Go there. Click on the item. And then go to the five thousand four shipment. Open the shipment number. And then what happens? You are going to perform the ship confirmation. Fine. Go there. Click on it. So let us now perform the ship confirmation. Open the five thousand four now. Fine, go there. The five thousand four is now done. Fine, go there. And then remember, the shipping method is a must now. Fine, here shipping method is an important one. I am not giving you. Will not show you no error now. Fine, go there. Go there. And then here, what happens? I am going to requested quantity. I am not going to ship the entire quantity. Forty. I am going to do it. Now. Fine, here ten. I am going to do it. Now. Fine, go there. I am not doing it. And then here, what happens? The tracking number. There are so many blah blahs are there. Fine, everything. We don't have to fill up anything. Fine, no, there is all the ready interface. All this is done. So once upon completion, what happens? You can now see the send shipment advice will be running now. Fine, go there. The send shipment advice is nothing but the interface strip stop now. Fine, yeah, as of now nothing is there now. Fine, go there. Uh, excuse me, uh, I'm like yeah, that is. Yeah. In the uh, the the shipment method uh, that you said is just mandatory. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in in the setup uh, there was an option where uh, the override shipping method uh, was given. Maybe, but you see, we faced a problem. If the shipment method is not given or somewhere else, if it is not set properly, what happens? The transfer orders are not working. Maybe sales order may work. I think I'm not sure about it, but transfer orders fail. We struggled. We three or four guys were start working on it. Here, yeah, here in this uh, screen itself, at the line. The screen level. itself. What happens? You can also see if I don't give it the shipping method, and then what happens? I like, ship confirmation will not say the shipping method is required. Where, where exactly? In this line yeah. level, yes. Line saying, level, we can see the shipping method, which contain, which also contains the carrier, right? Yeah, of course, naturally. Uh, so, we'll not see. You are saying that it is already there. Why to give in the header now? That is what your question is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It should be defaulting, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. We'll not see this one. Uh, but I had a problem, and then what happens? We'll not see. Okay, the shipping method is already there in the line level. So, what are you saying that what happens when it is already there? Why to give it in the header now? That is what I am saying. Okay, we'll not see this one. Forty and ten. And then let me try to confirm it. And I have not given the ship quantity. And then what happens? You go there. So let me give a ship confirmation. I click on ship confirmation. I click on ship confirmation. <clears throat> See, it's not showing you a lot of uh, this thing, but it's okay. I think it has accepted it. I think probably. So these are all the normal warnings which are now giving you. And ship confirmation request with the warnings has been continued. We want to continue. All these things are now asking for it now. Fine, that's okay. Unable to contain. So what Ari was saying is very correct. Now, fine. Uh, even if the line level is there, the header level it is not required. That's what he's saying. Fine. It looks like it's very correct. Now, fine. Go there. So you have not uh, defined the weight and volume. It's okay. Fine. 
this is all the things okay fine fine great uh, and then click on yes by which what happens it will not get shipped fine you click on yes now fine so remember shipping method must be either available on the line level or on the header level it is not that fine line status is not shipped actually fine it is not shipped fine previously i have forgotten the status actually fine what are the status i don't know fine go there we will not see it is not shipped actually so the manage shipment line is not saying shipped fine go there and then we will not query for this again and click on search now it is not shipped actually it is not shipped fine the shipping is now complete actually fine for those who want to ship now if you go on that what happens you will cancel now and then you go to the main area what happens it will not show the what is the overview area what happens it will not say the ship fine because on the stage it does not come to ship now we'll not go to the transfer orders now fine go there go to the manage transfer orders and then let us now requery it we'll go there let us now requery it okay one time and then what happens uh, there is no such the refresh icon here now fine go there i will now select and then click on that what happens you'll now see that what's called you know how to refresh it now click on done and then come out of it now and then here again we'll now go on the view the shipment and receipt set click on view and receipt will appear what happens you now see the expected receipt date is coming and it is now closed fine those and four is closed fine the shipping method is there now we can go on and query on the destination arm fine if you make any of the mistakes what happens the expected receipt date was not coming fine for us what happens for our project was not coming and then we found that so many small small mistakes here and there what happens even the sub inventory location was causing a problem for us i think so that's why what happens you uh, see that everything is proper now fine now what happens is not shipped is the 40 now shipped and is not at receive it fine let us now go on and receive it in the destination or fine go there let us now go on and receive it in the destination or <clears throat> go there and then here what happens you go there you go to the warehouse operations and then what happens you go on the visit so go to the warehouse operations and then here what happens you go there and then go to the inventory <coughs> and then let us now go to the destination chain the organization destination and go there click on chain the organization destination so it's a p502 and go there so click on okay now and go there there what happens in the header level i have not given the ship method now fine in one of the cases it gave a problem actually i don't know the line level i have not seen it properly but are you what happened i had a problem so any anyway, what happens it does not giving a problem no fine go there now once when you go there i am in the destination organization here what happens you go there and then i am in the oh no i have i have to go to the receipts now fine click on the receipts the click on the receipts what happens here itself it will not show you how much is expected now fine is no it is no expected from this child or what happens the two shipments actually go there receipts So this is what is so the main overview page itself. What happens? It will not show you the expected shipments from the jail or or otherwise. What you do is you go there and then click on the what happens? You go and then receive expected shipments and then here what happens? You make a query on the transfer order one zero five two zero two fine one zero five zero zero two and then you tap. So we'll not query it and then always make the due date as blank and then see make it as due date as blank and then click on search. So on the overview page or otherwise it will not show what the things fine go there. So let me select both the lines and then receive it now fine go there. Select it and then click on receive. And then click on receive. So select both the lines. And then you know, forty and ten quantities have been come to go. You know, click on receive. <coughs> and then click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show you the receipt quantity. Fine, like forty and ten over there. Now, fine, go there. And it is a standard receipt. And so what happens? Uh, we cannot provide any supplementary at all. Supplementaries cannot be provided. Fine, go there. We will not create a GR number. I click on create receipt. We are not going to create a GR number. Fine, go there. So select both the lines now. Fine, select it. You may select and then click on create receipt. By which what happens? The GR number will be created now. And then we will now give the what happens? The packing slip number. The fine go the shipping method here it is not required so the number of packing units were four four units are there four packing slips way bill number 567 something like that so bill of lading number <coughs> notes kada kada fine go there click on submit by which order the gr and we create <coughs> click on submit by which order we are now creating a gr number on fine 1002 is the gr number fine go there click on okay now now if you go on and see on the transfer orders now fine go there you go to the manage uh, transfer orders now fine go there and then Because it has to be received and then delivered. Also, fine. Click on done now. Ship reserve is not coming. Fine. Go there. Click on the view shipments and receipts now. Fine. You can now see it's not received, but it is not a delivered. Actually, ship and then received and then not a delivered. So, once it is received, fine. Go there. So, one thousand two is the GR number. Fine. Go there. Click on it and then here what happens? Go there and then uh, click on it and then here what happens? You go and then what happens? Do the put away now. So here in EBS is known as a what happens? The delivery here it is known as a put away. Fine. Click on put away and then G GR number is one thousand two. Fine. Go there. Then click on search now. So we are searching on the GR number. Fine, go there. And then both the lines are available here. Fine. Select both the lines with the control. And then click on put away now. Fine. The EBS delivery is known as a put away now. It is in line with WMS actually. Fine, go there. And then the sub inventory is already populated in the source itself. Fine. From where only the min max planning has been done now. So if you want, you can even make a change of the sub inventory and then deliver it to some other place if required. But not only since min max is the one which is now asking for it. So what happens? The SFSI is the one. So click on submit by which what happens? It will be going over there. 
So click on submit. And then maybe you want to put away transaction was created and then go there. And then if you go on and see on the what happens, the managed transfer orders, the delivered also will be coming. Go there. Click on it now. And then click on it. Now. Select it and then click on it and then click on it and then click on what happens. Uh, view shipments now with the current robot. And I'm not sure anything about it. Go there. I'm sure anything about it is also there. Remember, some two, three persons had problems on the transfer orders in my, what happened, they asked me. And then after some time, what happened, they told me that, sir, we have solved it. <laughs> and then we, they get some issues or something else. So this completes the transfer order route of what happens to your uh, uh, replenishment actually. We have seen the sub-inventory way of replenishment. We have seen the supplier as a source type. And then now we have seen the org as a source type for which what happens, there are plenty of setups. Also. So many setups for the org level point. The release sequence rule, the, 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 the pixel grouping rule, the release rule, and then the shipping parameters, etc. etc. Everything has been done now, then accordingly, what happens in order. And they are all mainly required only for order management, actually. Fine. In order management, you can even have more complexities, actually. Fine. So once in end on order management, I will be teaching you those things also. So any doubts on this transfer orders route now? Click on that. So SCO is also proper, and then what happens? The transfer order also went down smoothly now. And I'm again and again insisting, please do not use my login and then uh, do the test now, fine. Because what happens, uh, my login is fully set now. Only when you create your own, then only what happens, you can understand about how you are making a mistake actually. And the excellent platform to what happens, uh, make a test of it now, fine. Go there. How do you find my coverage? Nobody covers this to this extent actually in any training program in Hyderabad. Because what happens, uh, they rush through. Fine. They it is exhausting and it is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It must be in depth actually. Fine. Then only what happens? You'll be able to perform the activity in the client's location. Then you will not be able to understand where exactly you're making a mistake. Now I told you all the salient features of the mistake making areas actually. Because till now, in the past one year, I've seen some three or four guys reported to me. Only one of them I, I worked on it. The remaining what happens after one a day, one day after one day, what happened? They themselves told me that sir, they have solved the problem. So that way, what happens? So do practice on your machine, then only what happens, you'll be able to do this very clearly. And tomorrow we are going to see the supply chain execution actually, fine. the SCO rule, there I'm struck actually. Fine. I'm, I want everybody's help actually. Fine. Uh, tomorrow we are going to see the supply chain execution rules actually. Fine. SCO is a very powerful tool actually. And then that we are going to see about how to make it now. Fine. Tomorrow we'll know how. There I'm unable to do. So I will now take your help also. Fine. <clears throat> Any doubts? Good then, if there is no other doubt, what happens? We'll now call day and then we'll now see the tough portion of this SEO supply chain execution actually. Fine tomorrow. Thank you, Nana. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.